be better for you guys. You actually see me, and if the leg is less leggy is the next question here. So let's see. Um, building some jank decks. Okay, so people at Twitch, um, looks like you guys are seeing me. Um, do you guys, is it still super laggy for you or has it gotten better? Because I had to stop and then restart, yada, yada, yada. Uh, he went offline. Yes, relaunching. Bit better. Uh, DPS? Nope, not DPS. That's damage per second. I'm looking for uh, resolution. Res. To hopefully stop. Um, okay. Fingers crossed this fixed the lag problem. Um, okay, do you see me? This is the next question. Um, people in... Ah, cool, okay. Uh, let me know. Do you guys actually see me? Uh, it is not saying that I'm live. It does take like a couple minutes to update. So if I was live, I hopefully will become live again. Show chat. And yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure. Let's relaunch this page. Oh, let's relaunch this page. I'm going to have to relaunch a bunch of pages here to see what's actually going on. So let's play some budget janky magic. Budget janky modern decks is the name of the game today. I see you on YouTube, but not on Twitch. Sure enough. Um, okay. Um, it says my status is better, so that is fantastic. Uh, what's going on here? Live chat. Much better. Okay, cool, guys. Let me update this chat here. I've got to update a bunch of stuff now that I've, uh, you know, relaunched another, uh, another live stream. <laughs> Words. They're difficult, okay? Okay, pop out chat. Throw it over here so I can actually read what you guys are saying to me. I'm just repeating myself over and over again here. I apologize for that. Okay. Try out my desk. I talked to you about it. What? Try out my deck. Oh, uh, which deck is that? Uh, Craig, which deck are we talking about here? Um, I have a couple people talking to me about a couple different decks, so uh, I'm not always clear on which deck people may be talking to me about. So, what deck are you talking about there, Craig? And let's see, am I live on Twitch? Can someone confirm the Paradox Eggs deck? I have been, okay, I yes, yes, I have been working on that one. Um, cool, okay, Tyler Brave, uh, welcome to the chat, uh, welcome to the live stream, and we see me on Twitch. Okay, things apparently have been sorted out. The, the crisis is over, and we can get back to just kind of hanging out, chatting, doing some stuff, and then we will be playing some Magic decks here, probably in the next, like, five minutes here. We're actually probably gonna kick off here right away. Um, okay, looking good. So this is a less laggy, I'm assuming, for everyone. Again, I'm, I'm no longer doing seven, I'm no longer doing 1080. It's a 720 stream, so, um, yeah, so should be a little bit less laggy coming from both sides of, uh, for me, outputting to you guys and for you guys actually receiving it, so. Um, anyways, yes, Craig, you asked about the, uh, eggs deck. We were working on an eggs deck, and I have been playing around with it. It's... It's getting there. It's slow. Um, for those that are, are wondering what we're talking about, so uh, Craig sent me, actually, Craig, if you want to link in the YouTube chat um, for anyone that's interested, it's a, basically an eggs deck, except instead of using a whole bunch of eggs like the eggs deck, it's actually um, using a bunch of Manor Rocks, Paradox Engine, and uh, Panharmonic, pan Panharmonicon? Panharmonicon? To basically create the same thing you'd get with eggs, where you get a whole bunch of mana, a whole bunch of extra value, and then you basically find a wind condition of some sort. So currently, the wind conditions for that would be either um, Banefire, or I've been playing around, my the version I've been working on, Craig, is um, Rise of the Second Sun. So basically trying to do it so you... Uh, uh, using Rise of the Second Sun and basically casting it twice <laughs> to win the game. So um, it's mega janky, like the jankiest thing I've ever seen um, or ever built, probably. No, eh, it's up there. It's up there in one of the most janky decks I've ever built. Um, so still working with it. It's not really working. It has like a, I mean, when I'm gold fishing it, it has like a turn six right now, which is not really very good. Uh, okay, you sent it on Twitch. Um, so yeah, so maybe your version's winning on turn four. Mine, not so much. Um, Twitch, how are we all doing down there? We have Tyler Brave, we have, sure enough, uh, Soka, sorry, I don't know how to say your name, but you are excited about Paradox L, or Paradox Held, so, 
Um, Candyman, so if you are on Twitch, Candyman is the one that actually is Craig on YouTube, so he's the one that is how that, um, the Panharmonicon eggs, Paradox Engine eggs deck we were just talking about. Um, so what do people want to see? That is the next question. What deck do you guys want to see us playing? We are going to jump over to our play, our list of all of our decks, and we're going to take a look at them, and then we're actually going to choose a deck that we're actually going to play. So what deck are you guys interested in playing today? First deck, that is. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Sparky Sally, or Spark, Spark Sully? Um, it's Approach of the Second Sun, not Rise of the Second Sun. My bad, um, trying to remember card names. Um, when you play so many weird, janky budget decks and you have to remember substantially more cards than are actually, if you played like competitive modern, there is like a certain amount of cards you need to remember. You just need to know about. If you're playing janky budget modern, there is like twice as many or three times as many. So yeah. Uh, Black White Aristocats, okay, that's the first vote we have. Uh, someone also already said Paradox Elves, someone also uh, mentioned they want to see Tron, uh, Red Black Vampires, okay, so um, what I'm going to do, actually I have the ability to do this. If you're on YouTube, sorry Twitch, um, but on YouTube, I apparently can throw up a poll right now and you guys can actually vote. So the first few cards that we have been put in here, uh, so it's going to be a poll, making it right now. Uh, what deck to play? To play. So, we have Black White. Aristocrats. So, was the first one I saw. Um, what else we got? Uh, goblins again. Goblins. Oh, that is Boblins. I'm spelling that. My spelling's not the strongest either, as uh, you guys may, may have probably guessed. Um, Paradox Elves. Dogs, elves, elves, and what is the last one going to be? Uh, Heartless Mirror, oh, Red Black Vampires, uh, so we're going to go uh, Red Black and Vampires, Red Black, Vamp, and the last one's going to be Heartless Mirror, M-Y-R, Heartless, H-E-A, H-E-R, spelling is not my strong suit. Okay, card is created. If you are on the YouTubes, this is your time uh, to vote on YouTube. Uh, Burning Hands maybe as well. Oh, okay, we'll we'll, uh, we'll throw up some new votes for the next round. Uh, Burning Hands will definitely be in it. But in the meantime, vote on what one of those decks you guys want to see. Uh, the one that has the highest one will be the one we play next. Back to Event Manager, what I'm doing. Uh, so... Yeah, hold on. I can uh, I can wait on Tron. Uh, Tron will be uh, hopefully coming soon. Um, yeah, yeah. Tron will be played today. I guarantee you, because I haven't played Tron in a while, and I would like to play it again. Uh, it's super fun. It's one of the funnest decks I have played in a long time, and I actually quite enjoy playing it. So, um, selling not being. Yeah, you <laughs> get my speaking is not my strong suit. Spelling is equally not my strong suit. Um, funny as that is. And, okay, stay... What are we doing here? So I'm trying to, like, manage also what's going on over here. Um, yep. And let's go over back to the cards. What have you guys voted on so far? It looks like Paradox, Paradox Elves has a single vote. Nothing else has votes. So I think Paradox Elves is going to be the call. The one we're going to be going for here. Uh, let me close this, let me open up Paradox Elves, and we will take a look at what's going on. Paradox Elves combo. Am I, uh, just a question as well, just for people wondering, or just for my wondering sake, um, am I still leggy, or has that leg been fixed? Where is the voting thing? It should be in YouTube up at the top, uh, left hand, or top right hand corner. I don't even see the poll, where does it show up, where do we vote, I don't know. People are wondering, it should be in the top right hand corner. Um, should be in the top right, or top right hand corner. No leg, excellent. Okay, let me relaunch this and actually see what the, now that people actually can see it, <laughs> let's see what the votes actually come in as. Oh, you have to leave and come back. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't realize that was a thing. Um, so you have to leave the stream and then refresh. Okay, maybe we won't do the like the voting thing next. Um, I need to actually find a proper voting service. I think um, 
think MGG Goldfish Saffron, Saffron Olive actually uses a different voting system, so you guys don't have to like refresh the page and potentially watch another video and yada yada yada. So we'll use this one for this one. So currently it's one one one. As soon as one of these gets put to a two, we will go with that. Actually, why don't we just play Paradox Elves and we'll uh, come back and we'll play something else, uh, just so we can actually get into a game sooner rather than later. So for those that don't know. Um, the leg has been fixed as well. Okay, cool. So I'm glad that also leg is fixed on um, on Twitch. Okay, so for those who don't know, Paradox Elves, I'll give you guys a quick, super, super quick deck tech here. Paradox Elves is a combo deck where we are basically using Paradox Engine and a ton of mana dorks to generate an insane amount of mana. So as you can see, we have Arbor Elves, Elvic Mystic, uh, Heritage Druid, uh, War Color, it's actually a winning piece, and Lenoir Elves. So we're basically playing a bunch of mana dorks, ramping out to get the Paradox Engine into play as soon as possible, and Life Crafter's Bestiary into play as soon as possible. Um, someone said it's Q? I'm not sure how to make a card bigger. If you guys know how to make the card bigger, uh, let me know. Also, I don't know how. Is it a tilde key? No, I don't know. Um, to, like, hover over a card and actually see it, like, big. Um... Yeah, so anyways, that's the idea, so we're going to get these out, uh, generate a ton of mana, and then because of that, with Life Crafter's Bestiary, whenever we play a spell, we can pay an extra and draw a card, we eventually draw into the draw until we actually get Banefire, and then Banefire and our opponent's face off. That's <laughs> really the entire thing. Um, okay, uh, hold over and Q. So hover over, and Q? No, it's not working. Not working. Oh, oh, it is! Hold down Q. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, so the idea is, as I said, getting a bunch of the mana dorks in play, Elvish Mystics, Heritage Druids, uh, Lenoir Elves, all these kind of things. Also, um, what's helping us out is uh, Elvish Arch Druid, getting Paradox Engine into play, Paradox Engine, getting Life Crafters Bestiary into play, uh, using those two to draw as many cards as we want and get a ton of mana, and then Banefire our opponent's face off. So, there we go. We are going to jump into a play lobby. Also, if any of you guys that are out there want to actually play against me, um, come on out, throw me a line, uh, shoot me a line actually in one of the chats, and then uh, we'll actually play a game. Or you can just send me a request straight away. Either one. Um, I should upgrade my Modern Elves deck to this. Um, for the record, Modern Elves is definitely more competitive than the awesome ridiculousness that is Paradox Elves. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, you thought I'd be a giant monster, like, just, like, a huge guy. Actually, uh, there's, like, six people that were like, wow, you you don't look very geeky. I'm like, oh, um, thanks, I, I try to be geeky. Uh, okay, right for now, we're gonna throw a game out. I think we need to change this, because I originally had it on one win. We want two wins. And because we're gonna be playing just for fun area, I'm gonna throw this to 40 minutes, because I, I kind of don't want to just clock out, because I'm also kind of trying to, to involve you guys in the chats as well. So I don't want to kind of ignore chat in order to actually play and win the game. Uh, so we're going to go 40 minutes. Budget deck is going to be Paradox Elves combo. And then that is going to be hit play. See if anyone sees what they want. Uh, people might not be able to see me. If you guys do have a deck, come and find me. <laughs> and play with me right now. Uh, if not, I'm going to quit this and go back and put it as a 25-minute game. Uh, okay. Uh, hover, hit Q. Should I upgrade my modern deck? Uh, you thought I'd be a giant monster. So I'm just rereading, uh, is Prest of Thalia not modern legal or something? I don't know, actually. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with that card, I'm sorry. Um, so I used to, I used your Infect and Soul Sisters for modern. They are fun. Do I have an Infect deck? I don't think I have an Infect deck. Might be a similar deck that's close to, to Infect. Um, who's all, uh, chatting over here in the Twitch world? I think we're actually gonna go back here. So... Um, when you record on MTG Joe, how much editing do you do? Hey, someone found me. Sweet. Uh, fluff and stuff. Sounds good. Uh, how much, uh, editing do I do when I record on MTG Joe? I actually currently do zero recording, or zero editing when I record on MTG Joe. I actually have it set up on OBS, where I have the title card play, and then I play the match, and then I switch to the next thing. So I actually don't have to do any, um, any actual recording. And this is actually a very, well... I want to say a very good or just a pretty good opening hand. I think it's a pretty good opening hand. Obviously, we have a little bit of ramp. We need another land, but we do have a card to draw to, and we have double Paradox Engine, which kind of sucks. But I think I think it'll work. Uh, we're going to keep it, and we are going to carry on. Carry on with what we're doing here. And what... It's our opponent's turn first. 
So we are just going to skip through their turn, I guess? Yeah, okay. So um, our opponent apparently skipped their first main phase. So our opponent didn't play any lands. So I'm assuming, I'm guessing, that they are playing a dredge deck of some sort? No? Do they not have discard a card? I guess. Not really sure what our opponent's doing. Not going to lie. Not too, not too sure. Uh, in the meantime, we will... What's better? Uh, Arbor Elf. Arbor Elf is generally better. Uh, largely because if we draw, like... Actually, we don't have any, like, overgrowth or anything. I don't think we have overgrowth. Or, uh, uh, not over, not overgrowth. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, Utopia Sprawl. We don't have Utopia Sprawl in this deck. It's because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work with Lifecrafters Bestiaries whenever you play a creature spell. So, yeah, something to think of mind. Uh, nothing, we are not doing anything, we are shipping to our opponent's turn. The problem about magic nowadays is that it's all about winning and not about having fun. This budget deck is awesome for fun games. It is, it is definitely, and that is actually one of the big things that, um, I've pointed out in the past. My channel is not about, and I get a lot of comments about this, actually, I get comments usually every video, um, usually every deck tech specifically, and gameplay, that, you know, oh, you're not doing this right, or hey, this deck is not competitive, or, um, I get called a noob a lot, <laughs> um, because, uh, I'm one of those people that wants to play Magic to have fun and hang out and you know, it's a cool interactive experience and I'm not necessarily interested in like just going and winning. It's not really the reason I play Magic. I play because there's some cool interaction stuff and you got to do a lot of really fun things, which for me is substantially more interesting. Uh, let's drop down a forest and I think we're just going to go swing at our opponent's face for one and then play two, two Lenoir Elves. I think that's the plan gonna be the plan here so yeah I am that's the thing for me magic is more about having fun because it's a really fun interesting game you can do some super silly stuff uh, which was what I want to do and that's why I, I actually like playing commander a lot as well I don't play as much commander nowadays as I would like largely because I'm playing modern all the time because of the channel so it's a thing it's a you take some you win, you win some you lose some um, so that's kind of the way that works but yeah playing Lenoir elves playing a second Lenoir elves Getting two of them onto play, into play, and then ship to our opponent's turn. Next turn, we will play a Paradox Engine, I think. And if we have another one drop... Oh, did I play that wrong? No, I played... Uh, I totally played the wrong, guys. Did you see that? that was, that's called a misplay right there. <laughs> I should have kept up one of the Lenoir Elves, because then I could have played Paradox Engine... Oh, no, I didn't have enough mana. I need six mana. Um, our opponent's going gonna to Inquisition us. Probably going to take our Harmonize out, because he's going to... If he takes Paradox Engine, we still get to play the other Paradox Engine. Not the end of the world for us. Um, I feel like the new transforming green enchantment would be awesome in elves. It would be... I am scared it is a tad bit slow, uh, but it is something I'm going to probably test out to see how it actually plays. Uh, they can't discard since they weren't on the draw. Uh, yes, I realized that like way after the fact, that like well, they have seven cards, they should have eight. No, they shouldn't because they have seven, because they are playing first. Uh, which is me just drawing a blank on why. Um... Fun coincidence, uh, what? Fun coincidence, I made the same elf deck. Sweet! Um, I've seen it actually a couple of people running around with a similar, a similar elf deck, so. Um, going over to Twitch for a second. Uh, I need to figure out how to do this. Oh, uh, so Tyler, we were asking about uh, editing, how much editing I do when I'm actually live streaming, which the answer is almost none. Um, because I do all of my stuff live in OBS, uh, because you can actually switch on OBS between what you're currently doing, um, which is how I can move between this one and me being full screen. Um, because OBS, you can do live switching, kind of like what they do on hockey games, or, well, hockey games because I'm Canadian, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Hockey games. Um, what do I think? Okay, uh, no, that works out perfect. Sweet. Check this out, guys. This is going to be amazing. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Play Paradox Engine. Here we go. Uh, this may... I ah, know we don't have enough. We don't have a draw engine. Um, and then I have to use Arbor Elf to untap the forest. Oh, we're going for it, guys. We're going for it. Turn three. I don't think... Can, can I reasonably do this on turn three? I don't know if... Uh, this is going to be always yes. <laughs> and always yield. <laughs> uh, okay, so everything untaps. We get our Arch Druid. And we don't have enough we don't have enough guys uh, we need to wait one more turn we need to wait one more turn but in the meantime cancel uh, we can swing at our opponent's face for three damage um, so go to combat swing with everything so next turn we're gonna go for it we're gonna play harmonize hopefully draw enough stuff to then just kind of cycle and do our combo thing 
attack all of our stuff, and then ship to our opponent's turn. And we'll say ship until our turn, because we're not doing anything anymore. Uh, looking back here, so yeah, so Tyler, life switching, OBS, highly recommend looking into it. Uh, better luck in the games. Winning is fun, Jack. Uh, Jack Moodle a bit. Sorry, can't pronounce your name very well. I'm not gonna lie, I don't pronounce many things very well. Um, but yeah, winning is, winning is fun. I agree, but there should be also this focus on having fun. Like if you're playing a deck, um, you want to play a deck and have that wins. Yes, but you should also want to have fun while you play. Um, that being said, when you're playing Magic, you're playing it because there's like lots of cool things that are going on. So. 50-50. Um, I hope to crush our enemies, yes. I hope to as well. Um, one engine is good, though. Two engines is unbeatable. Fact. Uh, I guess so, yeah. I mean, if you destroyed one, we have a second one. So we have a backup. So going to our turn. Uh, can't take anything. Oh, yeah, because... No, wait. He could have taken... Oh, he took Harmonize. Um, okay. So here we go. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, no. No. Uh, I misplayed. Really bad. I'm actually supposed to tap down all of my stuff first, and then I'm supposed to actually cast the spell. Uh, my bad. Um, it's okay. We get a draw card. Fingers crossed we draw into something. We can also play Paradox Engine, um, which will, in theory, untap stuff. That's just that's such a bad play on my part. I'm not going to lie. Uh, boo. Boo me. Uh, please don't draw into a land. A land is like the one thing that'll kill us really bad right now. Please, no land. Please, no land. It is another Elvis Mystic. Fantastic. Um, okay. So, you're untapping the forest. You... You're gonna do that. Uh, tapping everything else down. Tapping, untapping our other forest as well. Because we can. This deck is a little bit slow to be playing online, I'm not gonna lie. If you're playing in paper, substantially faster, for the record. Uh, okay. Uh, why didn't we harmonize? Because he th he inquisitioned it out of our hand. Um, or thought seized out of our hand. One of the two. Uh, he thought seized out of our hand. Sorry, he inquisitioned nothing because we didn't have anything under. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay, you, you, you untapping this forest. Um, okay. Going back over to, to YouTube for a second. Um, have you ever seen the Iconic Masters spoilers? I have, and most of them are insane. I do feel really bad for whoever pulls a... Oh, cancel. Um, whoever pulls a Lord of the Pit as their rare card, because that seems really, really bad. Um, I mean, it's Iconic, yes, but I feel bad for whoever actually pulls it. Um, okay. Elvish Mystic drawing a card. Untapping all of our stuff. I mean, already we're just kind of swinging with a whole bunch of extra damage here. Um, I mean to say, if you win every match against your friends, they won't have fun, and eventually you will stop playing with you. Agreed. Um, something I used to do, actually, because I used to play Magic at lunchtime at my work, is we actually would play, because I actually have a lot of kind of higher-end decks, and my opponents would want to do two for one, or two against one, sorry, where two of my opponent, two of my friends would play against me when I'd be playing, you know, a higher-end deck, like I was playing Modern Elves. Heritage Druid, yeah, it'll get us there. Um, let's do the slow untapping of stuff. You doing this. And then we'll play... Tap down these guys. Play Heritage Druid. We do need to... Uh, Heritage Druid isn't going like, to do anything for us, unfortunately. We do need the Lifecrafter's Bestiary, or technically another Harmonize. Harmonize would have been good, um, unfortunately. So we're actually just going to swing in for 4 damage and then ship to our opponent's turn. Sadly. Um, yes... Um, Paradox, because Paradox Engine is going to allow us to draw any cards. Continue, yeah, I know. Sad day. Attack. Ship it our opponent's face. Uh, do an edge deck tech. What is... Oh, EDH deck tech, sorry. Um, I actually, um, I may do a couple EDH deck techs. Um, I actually put my EDH decks around here, so if you guys want to see later, I can show you what I'm playing in EDH. But, actually, one of the guys I do another series with on the channel, we actually did Season 1 before, and we're starting Season 2 in a week or two, is a guy named Jolt MTG. I'm not sure if you guys know him. I mentioned him when I started doing a test live stream a little bit ago here. He actually does almost exclusively uh, Commander decks, and does amazing Commander decks as well. They're super fun. Usually, them are, they're pretty darn rogue. So, I would highly recommend, if you have a chance, go check out Jolt MTG. I will throw that name, just so you guys don't. Jolt MTG. So, both in... Um, oh, it's waiting for us, yeah. Uh, so, Jolt MTG, 
Jolt, MDG. Um, if you guys are interested in commander content, hey, hold on, is someone Jolt down here? Is uh, is Jolt actually watching right now? That's my that's my next question. Dun dun dun. Um, yeah, so Jolt and I are actually planning on bringing back, um, or Jolt three five nine is actually I think is technically his channel. Um, is it my turn? No, it's our opponent's turn. Uh, so yeah, so we're actually bringing back season two of Back Alley Magic, which is him and I just kind of hanging out and playing Magic <laughs> for fun. Uh, it's not not nothing competitive. We're not like we are playing some competitive cards. Like he's playing a lot of decks that are kind of more built to be fun and janky, and I'm playing decks that we've built. Some of them I'm actually upgrading a little bit for season two, which should be fun. Hmm. Well, this becomes problematic. Uh, uh, so what do we do? I guess we just play Drew to the Anima. And then go to our opponent's face. I guess he can block with a couple spirits. Not really going to be the end of the world for us. Uh, we can only swing at certain elves, though. That's the problem. Sort of the problem. Uh, yeah. Drew to the Anima comes in. We will go to combat. And let's go with the Arbor Elves, the Elvish Visionaries, and then ship it to our opponent's turn. Um, anyways, yeah, so we're bringing back Season 2 of uh, Back Alley Magic, where we play janky decks against each other. And it's just more of a hang out, have fun, than it is about actually, like, being super aggressive and winning. It's not about playing the best we can, it's about having fun. Uh, actually, I would almost say that it's kind of like a podcast while we play Magic. It's kind of maybe a better way of actually describing it. And, yeah... What else we got here? What else is going on the thing? Um, I'm glad you guys actually know Jolt's channel. I mean, he's a super cool guy, uh, and I definitely look at him for a couple decks. Actually, one of the decks I want to build that he has made is the uh, Scorpion God deck. It just looks super fun to me. I look at him like, oh, that's, that sounds super fun. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? EDH is the perfect combo for fun competitive. Yes, I agree. Um, mind you, this being said, I do have some friends that play some pretty aggressive and, like, lacking the fun department stuff. Forest is not what we need. Uh, we'll play it, though, because why not? And then we'll go to attack with everything. Attack with everything. All creatures attack. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. EDH is really fun. Mind you, I do have some friends that play, like, super hardcore EDH. And I'm like, whoa. A little bit a little bit hardcore for me, guys. Sorry. Not quite as hard as you guys. Um, I love this kind of combo deck. They're always fun. I agree. Uh, I, I like playing this deck much more on paper. Uh, playing it on MTGO is a little bit slow because you're kind of doing a lot of like click, 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 click thing. Like, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta do this. So, Scorpion Good God looks awesome. I agree. Have you actually seen? I mean, if you, I highly recommend if you are interested in a Scorpion God EDH deck, go check out Jolt's version of it because it is super duper funny. Highly recommend it. Um, looks like Paradox Elves. Herbert, this is definitely Paradox Elves we are playing right now. Uh, I'm here a bit late. Uh, glad I made it. Booyah. Hey, that's, uh, uh, Austin Acid. Again. Welcome back to the live stream. I mean, not too late. I mean, I think we've been going for, what, maybe, maybe about 30 minutes. We're both 30 minutes in. Um, so we'll probably have another hour and a half or two hours, depending on how things go. I should say things go as in, like, how much cotton mouth I get and how, mouth, my, how much my mouth dries out by, by talking. Um, what does our opponent do? So our opponent uh, anticipated, and now they are going to path the High Arc, which is fine. Um, it means we will likely not draw into, yes, we're not going to draw into a land again, which is actually one of the things that we don't want to be doing. So, yeah. Um, so uh, going over to, oh, uh, and let's grab the mountain. Might as well. Save some in case he blows up this guy. Okay, going over to chats again. Um, how many people are actually viewing over on Twitch right now? That's one, uh, maybe one of my questions. So we have 11 viewers on Twitch. Thank you for the 11 viewers on Twitch. I know, um, I've been watching a bunch of Twitch streamers for Magic Online, or Magic, and a lot of them are playing, um, Standard and Cube. I think there's a big Cube uh, event going on right now. I'm just playing Budget Magic for the sake of playing Budget Magic. Um, I'm not playing very well because I'm more interested in, uh, hanging out with you guys and answering questions than I am, like, focusing on playing. So, this is something to keep in mind. If you are watching, this is more of my focus is interacting with you guys as much as I can rather than uh, just kind of forcing myself to play through stuff as fast as possible. Mostly because we're playing fun, janky budget decks. Um, and how many people we have watching over on the YouTube right now? We have total viewers of... Wait for it. Do you have the stats for me? 
I don't see stats. I don't know. Not really sure. You guys can probably throw a number out and <laughs> let me know how many of you are actually watching on uh, on YouTube right now. Um, I think it's 15? Maybe 15. Okay, we'll assume it's 15 people we'll you're watching. Um, what is our opponent doing? Opponent is throwing down Supreme Verdict? Detention Sphere, probably naming Lena Wiles. As I hold a glass of water up to my face. Uh, no, naming Arbor Elf. I guess that's also a bad thing for me. 57, 56, 24. Oh my god. There's a lot of you guys watching on YouTube right now. Welcome to Giant Monster Games Plays Budget Magic on a live stream version. And Harmonize. That's fantastic. Um, well, this changes the way things go down. Uh, if we had a Jorga, we could swing in and do some lethal, but we don't. So, yeah. Um, we are going to go this way, tapping down everything, and go like this. 59, wow. You guys, you guys amaze me. Uh, cancel, we're going to play Harmonize. You guys amaze me. You guys have such a, we have such a, like a good little community going on here. People interested in like hanging out, playing budget magic, playing magic that is for fun, not necessarily for like focusing on winning only. And we got Lifecrafter's Bestiary. This, hold on, cancel, wait, back up. Um, can I just play Jorga and win? I think I can, unless he has another path. So, I think we're going to go for it. Uh, cast with multi-kicker. So, how many times? Two? One? Two? One, two? Yeah, two. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Make it... Oh, okay. Untapping stuff, and then we're just going to swing in right now. We're going to go to combat. Go, go, go to combat. And I didn't attack. That's super annoying. Dear Diary, one day I will not just skip through my attack phase. Maybe that's not today, though. Uh, well, in the meantime, I guess we will play the Life Crafter's Bestiary. And... Yeah. Urgh. That's annoying. Uh, so it's going to come to play... Whoops, indeed. Uh, especially if you use a reservoir, uh, then it's not very competitive. Cannot Storm Deck, yes. That's uh, super annoying, I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay. Um, has anyone seen Magic Arena yet? I have. I actually was watching the live stream at work um, because I work a job where I can actually like watch stuff casually as I actually work, which is pretty nice. It's fun. Um... Do we have enough to... Uh, I guess so, but we're going to hold on. I'm just going to hold on and actually play Drew Lanham next turn and go off. I hope. This is the plan. Um, <laughs> I need a punt counter. I do. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm going to write that, that down. Punt counter is definitely something I need to put in, and then we can uh, tally up how many punts I make because, unfortunately, I do punt more often than I would like to admit. Yeah... Uh, no, these kind of problems do not happen in Paper Magic. That is, again, I, I do like playing Paper Magic a lot more, um, a lot more than I do like playing online. Um, I play online a lot because, I mean, I'm making videos for you guys, so that is a thing that happens. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw the stream, it looks interesting. Hey, cool. I'm glad you guys are enjoying. Oh, no, no, hold on. This is not to me. This is actually talking about Magic Arena. We were going to talk about Magic Arena like two seconds ago. Uh, Magic Arena, for those that do not know, I'm assuming most of you guys do know, but in case you don't know, uh, Magic Arena is basically Hearthstone meets Magic. So they're doing the, the free-to-play style setup where... Ooh, Elvish Mystic. Yeah, stay on top. Stay on top of my library. Uh, where you basically get cards for free somehow. It could be packs and then getting packs through quests. Um, and then you're building decks from those things rather than having to do what currently happens where you need to go and buy packs on MTGO or in real life and then slowly build up a, a, you know, a collection of cards or go and buy from a second-hand dealer, which is the current setup for MTGO and for Paper Magic, and they want to get away from that because it's an archaic method, especially online. Um, okay, we can do this, guys. We I think we're about to go all in. On our opponent and no point in tapping our lands down yet so we play the elvish mystic 
Uh, who doesn't punt? <laughs> yeah, I guess this is true. Everyone, uh, everyone punts sometimes. Uh, so you always go. Oh, so Paradox Engine has to go first because we want to use the mana from Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Um, so Lifecrafter's Bestiary happens with a yes. We pay a green mana. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Todd, Soul Sisters will be even cheaper now that Sarah's Ascendant is being reprinted. Yes, it is being reprinted, not necessarily as a very good rarity, and I don't think it's going to come down too much. It's definitely going to be, like, going on sale, um, so you can probably pick them up for, like, probably 18 bucks, probably, once the set is out, and there's actually a bunch of them on the in the pool. So, I mean, it's not going to be a super budget card. I don't think Sarah's Ascendant will ever be a super budget card, but it is going to be better. Uh, okay, uh, let's tap down some more stuff. One, two, and three. And we will play Druid of the Anima this time. Pay one. We'll go this way. Paradox Engine goes first. Um, what is MTG Arena? So MTG uh, Arena or Magic Arena is uh, basically Hearthstone meets Magic. So it'll be a way of getting Magic and playing Magic as a free-to-play model rather than as a... Um, as a free-to-play model rather than as a... Drawing blanks on words. I think I'm having a heart attack. Uh, rather than actually having to pay for cards. So you'll be able to do... If you play Hearthstone, um, then you kind of know exactly what it's going to be like. So yeah. Um, right now, it is supposed to be only on computer. Um, on PC specifically, not Mac. But it is being built in Unity. And Unity is extremely easy to port like everything over to. So it should be pretty easy. Uh, should be able to go... It should be eventually spread to everything. Uh, because that's the nice thing about uh, Unity is it can be used for absolutely everything. Um, cast this normally. This guy, um, Paradox Engine goes first. I will play. I'm actually going to focus a little bit more on playing here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to like also read comments on the chat. What we'll actually do is I'm going to focus a little bit more on playing, and then once we get back to the, like, what we're deciding to play, I'll actually do more chat stuff. So, yeah. Okay, green. And we are now at a net two. We are basically just getting around to actually waiting for uh, Wincon um, because we can't really swing in and win yet. Oh, cancel. Cancel. We're not playing that guy yet. We need to tap all of our stuffs. Tapping the stuff. Playing the Elves Mystic. Paradox Engine. And go. Yes. Paradox Engine. Lifecrafters Bestiary. I should probably set this to yield. Always yield. Uh, yes. Another Paradox Engine. That's going to be hard to gain a vantage on. Uh, at least we have uh, Archdruid. So we can play Archdruid. Not really going to gain much mana off of Archdruid at this point. And Archdruid. Play Archdruid. Pay one. It can be red at this point. Okay. Paradox Engine and Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Again, this is the slow part about this deck. I think I actually time-lapsed when I was doing this on uh, the actual video, the first one. It's like this, and then this, and then this. Come on, play quicker. Uh, okay. Visionary. Uh, ah. <clears throat> uh. Mm. Punt. That's a punt counter right there, guys. Punt counter number three. Punt counter number, or number two, I guess, at this point. Uh, I totally forgot to, like, tap out my stuff before I actually cast it, which is, um, which is bad on my part. Um, that being said, I mean, our opponent's at five. We literally just need to draw into a Banefire. That's all, all we're waiting for at this point. <laughs> That's, like, that is the, the objective. Get to Banefire. Find Banefire. Uh, you have thought of doing a Helix Principle deck with Paradox Elves. I haven't. I mean, I'm sure it can work. I'm sure it'll actually work perfectly fine. Um, did I not pay for, I didn't pay for that either. Uh, I don't think I paid for Lifecrafter's Bestiary last time, which is super annoying. Pay for Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Yes. And a forest. Ugh. Super duper lame, guys. I'm uh, punting a lot right now because I am just kind of going too fast. Play the forest. We'll play the forest. Play a paradox engine. 
Oh, we're not gonna we're not gonna draw off a paradox engine. Oh, we're gonna play it because we're gonna swing in. I think is that the best bet? I guess so. I guess it's the best bet. Ah, uh, super lame, super duper lame. Yeah, paradox engine goes away. Thank you. Go away. Choose which paradox engine doesn't matter. They're the same. They're the same for me. Um, and then let's go to combat. Yeah. Yeah. Attacking with everything. And chip to opponent's turn. Uh, I punted, punted three times in that round. One round, punt three times. It's the one thing about playing combo decks on MTGO is it's really easy to like misclick stuff um, or forget to pay for. Well, misclick is really what it is, and then you run into things like this. So yeah. Um. Oh wow, well, Sarah's ascended has already dropped to fifteen bucks. That is fantastic. Uh, ben wants a cat deck. <laughs> so thanks. Saying thanks, Jake. I, I need to pace myself. Um, usually when I'm playing just by myself and I'm not trying to pay attention to like chat rooms, I uh, I pace myself a lot more, or I try to at least, because um, I can actually take a little bit of time and kind of think about what I'm doing, um, as long as I can keep talking while I do it, basically. All right, well, we're going to go to our opponent's turn, and if he can get us, that's cool. If not, then if not. Okay, so do you prefer combo, aggro, or control? I prefer aggro. I am a Timmy player at heart. If I can play quick, fast, aggressive stuff and Supreme Verdict. <sighs> Dear Diary, today I misclicked, punted, and lost the game. And sure, he can thought seize our Paradox Engine out of our hand. That's fine. Um, but I am, I am definitely an aggro player. A dinosaur deck, I think right now making a Dinosaur deck is going to be doable in standard not quite doable in uh modern uh it's what with what i've seen for dinosaurs i don't think it's gonna be doable in modern you might be able to do a deck that is like something plus dinosaurs but i think if you're trying to make a dinosaurs uh arch druid um sure you can go on top you'll make a lot of mana uh dinosaur edh that on the other hand <laughs> does have legs and could potentially be a thing. Uh, Paradox Engine goes... Uh, yes. And yes. And Forest. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, um, I have played 8-Rack. Um, I actually have um, considered making 8-Rack because it's actually not a very expensive deck to build. So, uh, why do I, and, uh, sorry, is the, so Ben, is the reason asking, are you asking why on why I don't think dinosaurs could be a very good modern deck? Is this the question? Um, pirate EDH is also completely playable. I've already played against a bunch of people that have, like, pirate decks in EDH, and it's more like a pirate theme deck rather than, like, creature type pirate deck. So anything that has ships, anything that has, like, open ocean stuff, a lot of the stuff they fight in it, a lot of the things they win with it are, like, krakens and octopuses and stuff like this, so... Um, yeah, it's completely possible. Um, okay, hello Twitch. I don't don't think I'm forgetting about you as well. I'm uh, I also know you guys are there. Uh, well, combo decks like this uh, is even worse in paper. I don't think so. I mean, I think playing this specific deck in paper is super fast comparatively because you say I tap these three, I whatever play this. So you don't even like a lot of times you don't even have to tap stuff. You can actually shorthand things in paper, which here you actually have to physically tap 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 tap. Kill Leaf Arch Druid. Uh, you are going to the bottom. <laughs> I do not want Kill Leaf Arch Druid. Uh, Arbor Elf, I guess you can come out, and then we'll swing for two. I guess. I guess we can also pay for it. Um, which is... Oh, I should have actually tapped uh, Arch Druid. Oh, too late now. Um, so, okay. And it's going to ask if we want to pay. The answer is going to be yes. I'll even tap my forest in response. There we go, tap in the forest, say in the yeses. Uh, can I say always yield? No. Um, so yes. Drawing Heritage Druid. Okay, we are on the up and up, guys. We are on the up and up. Uh, can you say welcome to Giant Monster Games? Uh, welcome to Giant Monster Games. I said it for you. Um, thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, carrying on. And uh, We got our Arch Druid in play. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to try and get this combo out as fast as possible so we can go to the sideboard. Um, also because this is taking forever. Uh, tapping down, Arch Druid. Uh, getting to, yes, Forest. I wish I just auto-selected. I mean, if there was two green in your mana pool, why do you need to choose to play green mana? 
Kind of seems silly. Okay. Okay. I would rather tap a forest for this land. Life Crafters, Beaster Rary. Yes. Forest is not what I want. Things are not looking up anymore. Well, well, that's the thing that happens. We drew into a forest, which is what kills our combo, unless we have a lot of stuff going. So, yep. Go to combat. And swing for two in the ground. And chip our opponent's turn. Okay, looking back, uh, under $100 would be... I would say Ghost Soul Sisters is super fun. Uh, yeah, you can nowadays you can build Soul Sisters for like the good version of Soul Sisters, like really good for like hundred bucks, easy. Um, it's actually one of the first decks I started playing when I got into like more competitive Magic. Soul Sisters was it, and then I moved over to Dredge. <laughs> um, how much does this deck cost in paper? Currently, uh, this is a question on Twitch. Currently, this deck is around a hundred dollars uh, in paper. Um, a little bit less. Um, the thing is, Paradox Engine is in standard and is actually seeing a little bit of play here and there. I'm um, seeing, seeing play in a couple different things, so Paradox Engine is like the reason why the deck is actually expensive. So, yeah, that's currently what the price of the deck is. Okay. I think next deck we play needs to be a lot less combo y intensive. We'll actually play something a little bit faster and more aggro y. Uh, lower Lingering Souls out of our opponent's graveyard. Um, at this point, though, unless they have a path. I don't see how we don't win. Um, but they may have a path. It's completely possible. Okay, going to our turn. And we'll see what happens. We'll see how this pans out. Um, come on, what do we got? What do we have? We are gonna scry, what do we want? What do we have on top? Preferably, uh, Heritage Druid is fine on top. Cost one. Uh, okay, so tapping you for all the mana. Um, I guess we're going to untap a forest that is already untapped, which is fine. Okay, so our opponent decides they are going to do something. They are going to fatal push. They're fatal pushing our Arbor Elf? Okay, that's fine. That's okay by me. I'm okay with that. All right. Playing this... See if we can actually do this thing. Okay, we're going to go for the combo. This is the third time. Our opponent is being really nice, and it kind of is letting us... Uh... Oh, I don't want to do that. I'll do... Okay. Uh, our opponent is nice. I'm actually letting us actually get around to doing the combo here. So, yeah. Uh, Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Um, that's awesome, except it doesn't help us win the game right now. So, yeah. So we're just going to swing in. We're going to swing in for, uh, for some damage. Wah, 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 wah. This deck is not very consistent, I'm learning. Um, it is definitely an older deck I built on the channel, and the consistency level is not there. So, that is a problem. At least, though, I mean, you do get a ton of stuff into play really quickly. And now that we have two Life, life Crafters Beastry, we actually get a scry and draw a lot more. So, yeah. That's a thing. It's a thing that happens. Attack with all creatures, ship it to our opponent's turn. Looking back at comments, um, Twitch is pretty quiet. This may not be, if you are a competitive player, this may not be the stream for you. So, Twitch, I apologize. If you are a competitive streamer and you're watching me kind of fumble through stuff, I'm sorry. I play budget decks, mostly for fun. Uh, what do you play MTGO on? Uh, MTGO is its own program. So, I play MTGO on MTGO um, is the answer. So, yeah. Um, someone was asking about doing a mono green stompy. I have thrown it in the comments a couple times for voting, and it doesn't get a ton of really great responses. Um, but it is on my list of things, and I actually have like a prototype built, which I've been playing. And our opponent, oh, opponent decides to scoop, going to sideboard. Okay, okay, what do we think? Um, our opponent doesn't seem like they have anything quick, so we could probably just madcap, um, and hopefully draw into stuff. But I don't know if we need that. Um, Tormod script would be good. Let's throw Tormod Script in to help deal with stuff. Uh, Guilt Leaf Arch Druid, you can come out, one of you. Um, Enter the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. I think we could actually just run it back as is, taking out the Arch Druids. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah. And we're waiting on our opponent to decide what they're doing. Um, 
So, who is this guy? Okay. Sorry, Cruz, but you are going to the timeout zone. No one wants to hear you talking all mean to people. I may not be the best player, but I do not like people calling other people out in bad ways. Um, let's scroll back while we're waiting for our opponent to actually come back from sideboard. Let's go back and take a look at some stuff. Um, how about an Infect Cryfish? Cryfish? Hmm. Um, Infect is definitely a deck I've been working on, actually, because uh, a lot of people want to see super budget decks. So decks that are under $25, or under $30, really, I should say. And Infect is one of the decks you can actually do for under $30. So it's definitely going to be one of the decks that is going to be coming up sooner rather than later. Um, because it is a super duper rad super budget deck. Uh, let's see, keeping this open hand. Yeah, I think we can keep this open hand. We don't have Paradox Engine, which we do need to win, but we do have Lifecrafters Bestiary, and we have ways of getting a bunch of mana really quickly. So yeah. Um, I just turned in and saw Banefire. Isn't uh, instant <laughs> instantly love this deck? Yeah, it's a. Uh, Banefire is the primary win condition for this deck, so yeah. Under $35 and functional in modern. Okay, so let's be honest about functional in modern here. I'm not saying that it is going to be a $30 deck that you can go and play at every single FNM and definitely get in like, you know, 4-0 or 3-0. Um, it is going to be a deck that you can go and win against top tier decks probably 30-35% of the time. This is kind of the, the average. If I can go and actually win against some top tier decks, then it's worth building. It's worth playing. I mean, because we're building decks that are designed to be fun. Design oh, Banefire, yum. Um, we're building decks that are designed to be fun, that are playable, that work, that have fun, that are that have enough synergy that you can actually go and play them and feel like, oh wow, I'm actually doing something specific, not just cramming a bunch of cards together that may or may not work. Because that's one of the big things I see um, when I was originally starting out deck building, and I see a lot of uh, decks out there as well that they're a deck of cards that work as a deck, but don't really work in any synergistic way. They don't they don't complement each other at all. Like cards don't work or they have like two of everything and maybe a three of and a four of a one card where it just doesn't work. So yeah, that's the idea. Again, making decks aren't nece isn't necessarily about being able to go 4-0 in modern. Um, people are interested in about, uh, okay, so how about a double strike deck that runs like Infect? Oh, so like the, similar to the, uh, energy pummeler deck, I think it was. So similar to that. that. That is something that can also work. Uh, Kiln Fiend is cheap and competitive. It is. Do you enjoy anal from black men? Well, apparently Kaz is now being removed. Sorry, guys. I'm just not interested in having people come and just talk stuff. Okay. So our opponent is still, we're still waiting on our opponent to decide what he's going to take over our hand. He's probably looking at this and be like, what? What's going on? Oh, okay. I guess he kind of knows what's going on. He, can, he Now that he sees Banefire, he knows what's going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just kicked Cross for the record. Uh, okay. I'd like to see a blue combo or control deck. Uh, well, I have two blue control decks on the channel. Um, and not... I guess technically Heartless Mirror is a blue combo deck. Uh, MTG Goldfish has a double strike deck called Burning Rage. That's pretty fun. I haven't actually seen it. I try to watch most of his decks because he's a really fun deck builder. Hey, cool. Our opponent decided to take Banefire out of her hand. We have another two in the deck, so I'm not that worried about it. Should probably open up this. I know I'm kind of like straddling the lineup here, but can I actually make it so you can see what's going on better in the graveyards over here? And it is going to be our opponent's turn passing to us. Okay, let's focus more on playing Paradox Engine. Sweet. Okay. So we're going to go this way. And we have one of two options. We can play Lifecrafter's Beastuary, which is probably the better bet. Because then we can start scrying stuff. And we can actually get more cards that will produce stuff. Theoretically, though, we can also play Heritage Druid. Uh, yeah. So, now that I've looked at this... Oh, no, because we we're not going to get three. Um... Hold on. People are talking about... <sighs> okay, guys. No, we don't need to talk about inappropriate things in the chat. Um, I think what we're going to do is drop two elves into play. That's going to be the plan. I originally was like, oh, sweet, we can actually play multiple things, but actually we have to tap our elvish, Arch Dru our elvish mystic to actually get the second one, which means we don't have three elves, which means we can't start using Heritage Druid. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, your awesome love and positive attitude. Oh, thanks. I, I try to be, like, super positive about everything. I mean, there's no reason not to be. I don't see a reason to be angry about stuff. Because um, I've, I mean, this being said, I've definitely been in the situation um, in that seat where I'm like, oh, man, this card should be banned, or how dare you play this in, in Magic. And it's not a very fun place to be at, um, no matter who you are. Uh, I'd rather... It, it, it sucks when you have that feeling, but as soon as you can realize it, like, oh, wait, no, there is decks and there is cards that deal with these things, um, the game becomes a lot more open. You realize, oh, just because I am playing a deck that may be a little bit of oppressive, a little bit oppressive, <laughs> um, there is definitely ways around it. You don't need to worry. You don't need to be like, oh, my God, if someone's playing whatever deck, I can never beat it. It's like, no, no, you, there's definitely ways of beating every single deck. You just need to find out what it is and what the deck you're currently playing, what it needs to do to get there. So, yeah. Um, okay. Come on, opponent. Let us just start swinging for damage. Okay. Okay, so before we actually end this game, because we're maybe getting close, I don't know. What do you guys want to see next? Um, preferably not a combo deck. <laughs> Let's vote on something that is not a combo deck. I'm not putting the voting in again because you guys have to refresh the page, which sucks. So just uh, let me guys know. Say, tell me what you guys want to uh, see as the next deck we play tonight. Okay, Drew to the Anima. Uh, what do we have? Three, four. Oops. Uh, okay, we have enough to fire off Paradox Engine and something, so we might be able to get there. Maybe. Uh, so one, two, three. We're going for it. Uh, people are saying control, black control, aristocrats. There are some really good choices in there. I'm not going to lie, guys. You got some good choices. Um, Hydra hasn't been played yet tonight because control is really slow. <laughs> so our playing combo is really slow. So it's still the first game. Uh, Soul Sisters, Elemental Agro, man. Uh, blue, I don't have a mill deck. Sorry. Merfolk also would be fun. Merfolk is a little bit too combo -y. Oh, no. Oh, he's think twice. Okay. I thought our opponent was ca uh, countering it. <laughs> like, no, please. I don't want you to counter Paradox Engine. Hey, okay. uh, what are the options? So, uh, Shadow Titan one two three on Twitch. If you actually go to the channel, there is like twenty five budget decks that I've built. You can actually go and take a look at any of them. Um, you can just scroll through the page, and there's like any of those decks that are on the channel. Actually, I have on MTGO, so we can actually play any of them. Um, hmm. Okay. So now it is time to cast Drug of War Caller, Untap my stuff. Getting three mana, we can probably try Druid of the Atom. <sighs> no, we need to get Lifecrafter's Beast Rate down as well. Can we do this? Here's the next question. Um, we can get a value off of... I'm just wondering, can we get enough value? I don't know if we can, because we don't have the draw, uh, which is the problem. Um, because we play Lifecrafter's Beast Rate, uh, we will start getting the draw engine, but we don't have the mana to play the Druid of the Anima. But if we play Druid of the Anima, then we're not going to get any value off of Lifecrafter. Uh, mind you, we can always play Druid, so let's actually play... Unfortunately, let's play Lifecrafter, uh, Bestiary, all green. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, stuff will untap, and then we're just going to swing for three, and then go to our opponent's turn... Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong here. So we get Life Crafters Beast Cherry in. I should have tapped down... Oh, guys, I totally could have done it. Okay, so we have three. We have four mana right now. Which is lots. Okay. I totally did that wrong. Punt counter number five. Or number four. What are we at? Are we at punt counter four or punt counter five? That's my next question. And, okay. Playing Druid of the Anima. Uh, we don't have red mana, which is the problem, but we may be able to get um, another couple win condition cards, um, specifically another Jorga and or another Archdruid, or maybe both. Um, those would be potential things that would be awesome for us. Okay. And it's another Life Crafter's Beastry. <laughs> that doesn't help us at all, but it will help us get there faster. Uh, we are going to have to push to our opponent's turn one last time. So that is a thing that's going to happen. Um, we're going to play Lifecraft's BCR, then we're going to swing to our opponent's face. That's the plan. 
and then we're gonna go to our opponent's turn and yeah we'll keep going i don't know why my nose has been extremely itchy all stream drives me crazy uh cancel that and one and one two three i guess why not we'll go this way three you too okay paying three Getting that, untapping everything, and then we will swing for three damage onto our opponent's face. Soul Sisters goats, <laughs> no mono goats. Uh, some people like goats, some people don't like the goat deck. Mardu Reanimator. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Out of all the decks I've built and all the decks I've played, uh, Mardu Reanimator is like the funnest deck I have to play. I enjoy it the most, hands down. Um, yeah, go to combat. Goats, 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 more goats. Okay, attack with everything. Ship it to our opponent's turn. See what we got. Uh, please build an initiate deck? Or anti-net deck? Uh, so what do you mean by an anti-net deck? Uh, what's, the, what's the question um, for anti-net deck? Like what, like as in a deck that is super duper rogue weird? Okay, well, fair enough. I can, uh, I can, I have a couple that are super. Actually, the next week's video is like crazy not meta deck at all. And it's also 30 bucks. Next deck is a super budget deck. Super budget deck. Can anyone guess actually? Here, that's a question for you guys. What is next week's deck tech? What do you guys think it's actually going to be? He wants 100% brew a deck. Um, that is possible, 100% for me to brew a deck. The thing is, about, we got something to remember about brewing um, is like, you're not just like off the top of your head being like, I think this and this and this and this. There's a lot of times where when I'm brewing stuff, I like, what are other people doing? What are some other decks out there that are being played in the same idea? So when I'm building a deck, I like, what other decks are people building that are like this? And then I can say, oh, this, this is a neat card. Oh, that's a neat card. Or like, oh, I would change this around. And then you start, you know, Frankensteining and brewing your own deck. It's like uh, building within a bubble is really, really, really difficult. So. Uh, super budget is sweet. Um, okay. Uh, if you love Mardu Rianwar, play it. We were here to watch you. The more fun you have. Oh, yeah, fair enough. That is a valid, valid argument. You guys are here to watch me play. You guys want to see some of the decks I want to play. Uh, a deck that specifically targets the meta decks. Um, so, so if I'm going to build a deck that is specifically designed to attack the current meta, that gives me two options. Um, the first option would be I build a deck that is uh, designed to take down Tron because there's Eldrazi Tron and there's actual Tron. You are on the bottom. I do not want a forest ever. Not right now. That is the worst thing I can draw. Um, so it's either going to have to target Tron or it needs to target Death Shadow. Um, because Death Shadow, our Elf can go on top. Um, so those are the two things. It's either Tron or Death Shadow That if it's going to be an anti-meta deck. The thing is, the meta right now is quite healthy. So even those decks don't make up a giant share of the, like, the actual meta. So, eh. Okay. And actually, <laughs> I think... Uh, uh, Austin Acid actually has a perfect valid uh, thing. Hate Bears definitely hates on Tron. So, uh, apparently I went to combat. We're going to swing in with stuff because we can. Uh, attack with everything. I probably should have not actually skipped my main phase, but I accidentally did. So we're going to the second main phase. Yeah. But Hate Bears definitely, Hate Bears definitely, definitely, definitely does hate on both, uh, both of those. Uh, what is our opponent playing? One mana? What does he have for one mana? He has unsummon <laughs> return to our creature to its owner's hand. I don't think he realizes that that is really not a bad thing for us. Actually, that helps us a lot. That is, thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. Okay. What do we got? Dun, 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 dun. He's going to unsummon something else. That's also fine. I am also okay with that. Uh, opponent still has three cards in hand. So... That's a thing. It's a thing that happens. And end combat. Opponent takes three damage. Okay. Let's throw down a Heritage Druid for a single green mana. Um, oh, 
I did these wrong. I'm supposed to do Paradox Engine first. Uh, okay. I was in Paradox Engine last. So it untaps everything, and then I can actually pay for Life Crafters. Uh, so we are going to pay for one of these with just the mana here, and then we're actually going to have to pay for the second one. <laughs> hate Bear Burn. Is that even a potential deck? Can you even build a Hate Bear Burn deck? Is that... That, I don't I don't know if that's realistic. <laughs> uh, no, we're not going to pay for the second one. Uh, okay. Everything untaps. We get a Heritage Druid. And then we are going to go on the play and draw craziness plan here. So, we'll go this way. One, two, three. Tapping you. Uh, might as well throw down Arbor Elf. Yep. You go, you go, and Paradox Engine. So we can actually untap stuff and then retap it to gain more value. So you go, you targeting these three. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to focus on playing because we're actually at like 11 minutes. So if we do for some reason lose this match, uh, we actually need to um, play really quickly. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, paying for that as well. We are gaining a bunch of mana and forest. Not the best thing, but again, we drew a bunch of cards. We have two Life Crafters in play. So it's actually not that slow. Uh, okay, Visionary. Might as well play this guy. And Life Crafters go first. Paradox Engine goes last. Uh, Blue-Black Control Deck. I've actually been working on one. Um, there's some pretty good like Blue-Black Control Decks you can build. So it is in my, my repertoire of things to build someday. Uh, we're in my, in my list of stuff to build. Okay, we literally just need to draw into a Banefire now. Uh, Harmonize will help, but not there yet. Lenoir Elves will help, but not there yet. Drawing a card, and Elfish Mystic. Um, what do we think? I think... I think going on the play... The Lenoir Elves, doing a bunch of draw, doing a bunch of untap. Again... Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Try to play fast. Try to play fast here, guys. Uh, basically, at this point, we're just digging. That's the entire thing we're focusing on right now is to dig up um, a Banefire so then we can just blow our opponent's face off. Uh, that is the... Uh, we have a Jorga. Oh, well. Um, yeah, let's go for Mystic. Not yet. First of all, we need to do this one. Might as well get as much mana as we can. And then we'll throw it on a Mystic. Crafters first. Crafter, Crafter. And then a Paradox Engine. I guess we could be doing it the other way around now. It doesn't really matter. But this is the technically the more efficient way of doing it. So one, two, three. So much clicking. All of the clicking. Dinosaurs, Goblins. Okay. So at this point, we literally just... If we draw into a Banefire, we win. That's 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 the name of the game right now. Because we have, because uh, we have 14 mana in the pool. So we need to keep playing. Yes, life crafter, life crafter. Uh, once we have more than like a fair amount of mana built up here, we might actually just try and harmonize to dig even faster. But right now it's uh, kind of a slow, slow go game. Just slowly, slowly, slowly going, guys. A lot of clicking. Again, in paper, you can just say, okay, I tap these guys down, gain mana, gain mana, gain mana. They all untap. Duh. Done. But, again, we're not playing the... We're not playing a, a paper game. We're playing a online game. So we have to physically do it because the computer doesn't know the difference between one way or another. And I guess we'll just play Harmonize now? Yep. Paradox Engine untaps all of our stuff. Which means we get a bunch of mana. Um, we don't get to draw cards from these. <laughs> Neat. Uh, okay. We're tapping a whole bunch of stuff, guys. I'm liking Duress. Oh, the new card from the new set. Um, well, Duress isn't new. Oh, uh, we have some new people actually responding, actually, from Twitch. Welcome, Twitch viewers, as well. I know most of my audience is on YouTube, which I do appreciate because I put a lot of regular videos out on YouTube. Um, oops, cancel. And, yes, you can go. Uh, but, I mean, again, because I'm doing live streaming, I would like to be live streaming to Twitch as well. So, yeah, welcome, Twitch viewers. Um, can you show us in the chat? Um, I will in a minute. 
Um, once we're finished this game, we'll actually I'll show some more of the decks. Oops. And uh, yeah, we'll actually take a look at some of the other decks we have out there, so we can actually talk about what we're playing. And yeah, just trying to play through this game because I mean we're at seven minutes, and this has been a super long one. Oh, apparently our opponent has disconnected. Maybe they'll come back. Fingers crossed that they come back, because I would like to bane fire them and win. <laughs> come on, this deck is so slow. Um, at times it's slow, I should say. Okay. Oh, Life Crafters. Life Crafters. Paradox Engine. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we have three of them in the deck, because it takes, especially playing online, it takes so slow. It's so slow. Just going forever. Come on, guys. We're going to get there. We'll get there at some point. Okay. Yep. Got to get some more mana back. Don't have enough to kill our opponent yet. One day we will. It'll be this thing, it'll be like, you guys will go away, you can go get a snack and come back, and I'm still going to be like tapping elves to play elves to tap elves to play elves to eventually draw into a main player and win the game. Come on, guys. We're so close. I can feel it. In my bones, I can feel that we're getting so close. I Okay, the problem is I'm on my second main phase because I accidentally, for whatever reason, went straight to attacks. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I could have just like, again, he's tapped out. If I would have, like, waited and did this first, I could have, like, drug a war colored for 100 or whatever. Um, not actually 100. It's not literal. <laughs> but I could have drug a war colored and swung in for lethal. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Unfortunate for me. Oh. Hey, there's a 64 viewers on, on YouTube right now. Wow. That is a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the stream. We are talking about what we are going to be moving on to soon. Um, once this deck roll, once this game rolls up, I mean, I don't see there's a way that we lose. Um... Hold on, did we draw it? No, we did not draw it. Uh, the big thing right now is we are just trying to grind our way into a bane fire to a bane fire opponent's face. Even though I'm pretty sure our opponent is still disconnected. I haven't seen the little thing pop up where he's come back. So that's the thing. That happens. Uh huh. Um, use cards that help your opponent. Like a group hug deck? I'm not sure what we're talking about here. Someone someone mentioned something that looks very group. Hey, there's bane fire. Do we have enough? We do have enough. Okay. So we're going to Bane Fire, targeting our opponent. Brip, 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 brip. Red. Whole bunch of green. Just like all of the green. Scroll down so we can see how many we have. Oh, let's right, scroll up. Nine. Fourteen. There we go. And we untap all our stuff, and we do it. We got it, guys. <laughs> we, we Bane Fired our opponent for the win, and that is going to wrap up. There we go. Play Lobby. Go play lobby. Let's go back to the full screen while we talk about what we are going to be moving on to. Also, while we do this, I actually am going to um, crack a beer. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I actually want to start a new series. Actually, this is a perfect time to talk to you guys about this. I want to start a new series called um, Brewing Decks with a Brew. Oh, God. Apparently, this beer is extremely carbonated. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> um, you guys are going to have to give me one second while I go get a towel. <laughs> Yes, the tarp. Um, well, that happened. Um, remember that time that I opened a beer on live stream and then it exploded? For the record, it's a, a homebrew um, because we homebrew a whole bunch. So, yeah. Um, sometimes if you over... Um, oh, rocking lights around here. Um, if you over uh, carbonate, um, you do this by putting in too much sugar. Did you guys know that a brew, by the way? Um, putting, putting in too much sugar when you go into your final stage when you're bottling. Um, you can overcarbonate stuff. It's a neat thing to know. <laughs> but it happens. So yeah, blue towel. Yes, I know. It's a blue towel. Um, <laughs> this is why you came to the stream. To watch me blow up beers on live stream. Um, anyhow, um, as I was saying before I literally lost like this much of my beer, 
um, to foam on my floor. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about starting a new series called uh, Brewing with a Brew. Um, it is super duper foamy, guys. Not gonna lie to you. Hey, the towel is like actually like the right color blue to be invisible. You guys can't actually see me cleaning up the mess. As far as you guys know, there is no mess to clean up. <laughs> not, not with a towel. Um, play budget deck, under $45. Okay, so we're talking about decks that we're going to play next. We've already played the Goblin deck today. Um, we've also played um, the Paradox Elves deck, if you are just joining us for some reason, if you haven't been around for a while. Um, the other decks um, I would like to play, potentially, is Tron Reanimator. So you guys can say either one of those. Those on the floor. Things will eventually absorb. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Well, um, let's take a look at what's actually going on in the chat here. I'm going to make it nice and big. Um, that was quite a brew <laughs> you got there. Thanks. Um, I mean, they're bigger bottles uh, because, well, why not, right? Because, I mean, why, why brew in a small bottle when you can brew, brew in a big bottle? Is it Delver? I see a lot of goats and a lot of control. So, um, I think the big thing we're actually going to try is we may actually play the mono black control deck. I haven't played it in a while. It is a super fun uh, lot of decks. So I think okay, I think the two decks we're going to play we're going to play mono black control right now, and then we're going to play the goats deck and see how well we do with the goats deck. Um, what's happening over on Twitch streaming? I see there's a bunch of people. Um, it brew up. Toast Recon. You must be a father, because that was the most fathery, punny joke I've ever heard. It's just <laughs> non-stop foaming here. <coughs> if I had a, uh, another, <coughs> pardon me, if I had another glass, I would just pour it into a glass, but I don't. So, I'm kind of stuck with this, so. Okay, let's queue up for another game. Um, now that I've successfully blown up a beer, <laughs> talk to you guys about beer and more beer. Um... And so I think the ones we're going to do, so I think for the, the rest of the night, we're going to play three more decks. Uh, we're going to play Mono Black Control, which I'm going to move over to right now. And then we're going to play Goats, and then we're going to finish the night off by playing Tron. So those are the ones we're going to play, so you guys have an idea of what we're actually going to be moving into. Let's move the chat window over here so you guys don't have to look at the YouTube chat, unless you're on YouTube, because you already see it. Okay. Control is what we're moving over to now. Mono Black. Um, brr brr, looking for it here. Budget mono black control. That's what we're going with. Um, this is not the updated one for the record, guys. Um, this is the older list. I actually, if you go to the mono black control, which is, I'm going to assume the reason why you found the channel because it gets the most views. Um, mono black control. I do have, I have posted an updated list of this as well. Um, yeah. Also, uh, welcome everyone that is now joining us and that is uh, watching. Um, not enough bane fire action. It was a bit too slow for my taste. Yeah, okay. This is uh, the um, blah blah blah. The Paradox Elves deck. Um, is anyone actually out there that wants to play a game? Maybe, maybe not. Ah, we're gonna we're gonna throw a play. We're playing mono. Oh, uh, nope. Leave event. Leave event. Leave match. <laughs> I did not select the right deck. Oh, we did. We did. We we're playing bunch of magic. Okay. Okay. Mono black control. Uh, can you brew a care uh, care bear deck creature that helps opponents? Like the opposite of hate bears. So if we make a Care Bear deck, which is a deck that's all about caring and helping your opponent, how does it actually win? Um, yes, we won. We are going to play first. Um, would we be aiming to win by, um, like, giving our opponent stuff? So kind of like the GIF? Well, no, no, it's not GIFs. What's it called? There is a word for it. I can't remember what it's called right now. Um, anyways, let's get into this. Uh, what do I think is opening hand? We have... Um, I think it's keepable. I think it's keepable. I think this is a good opening hand. Um, yeah. Okay, wow. Twitch has exploded. There's a ton of people talking about Twitch right now. Right now. Um, Hunted Cycle. There we go. Harmless Offering. There we go. Sorry, guys. That is the, that is the card I was thinking about. Um, yeah, basically playing Harmless Offering, and then you give them, like, Demonic Pact. Um, there's a handful of other ones that do similar stuff that are just super-duper bad. Um, yes. So making a deck that is basically a Harmless Pact deck um, in Modern is possible. 
Um, I think it might be super janky, and I don't know if we can make it as a budget deck. That's the one problem. There's a couple cards you really kind of need, um, and they're not necessarily budget. So, yeah. Um, is Harmless Offering who doesn't want to accept a kitten? Uh, especially a kitten that is infected by Eldrazi. Um, and we might as well ship it to our opponent's turn. No point in playing Sign of Blood. We are holding up some mana so we can basically go for the throw, whatever he plays. And then next turn we could actually Gatekeeper Malakar if he plays something as well. Uh, make an Everybody Wins Commander deck that is... Actually, so the one Commander I play, I actually... Because I have three Commander decks. And the one of Commander I play is Braids. Not the black one, the blue one. Um, let's see if I, if I have her here. So this is the Braids deck I play. You guys can see. You guys look down the stream here. Is it focusing? Oh, it's blue. <laughs> so it looks like a black card. This is the blue braids. I have a key that is keying blue. So you guys, you guys get the problem here. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so the, this braids was is at the beginning of each player's turn. Um, they are beginning of each player's keep. They get to put a artif or, uh, creature, land, or artifact. I believe it is. I have to look again. Um, from their hand into play. Um, the objective of the deck is basically to win, is you're just playing giant things that win you the game. But it also makes it so your opponents get to do all kinds of funny stuff as well. Um, is this a creature right now? No. It is not a creature right now. It doesn't have anything to crew it with. Uh, that is a thing. And it's also a non-artifact creature, so that doesn't really help us with that either. Okay, well, I think we are just going to hold up. Hold up stuff again. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that, the point of that commander, commander, or the point of that commander deck is I have a lot of like funny everyone does something kind of stuff in it as well. So there's um, what are some? It also has um, I'm gonna have to look through the deck to tell you what's in there. I, I totally it has like psychic battle and it, it's just basically like a weird augment deck where it changes the rules of the game like extremely, not just a little bit. So you know people are taking random turn orders and. Um, everyone gets to copy everyone else's spells and stuff like this. So that's the kind of the point of that commander deck. So, pretty funny. That swamp is so shiny. It is so shiny it has no art. Because, for some reason, my MTGO likes to um, just kind of not put art in stuff every so often. Or sometimes it puts in like the like blue and purple or blue and pink stuff. Um, so let's see if our opponent... So our opponent is going to crew. Um, hmm... Well, I guess we are going to go for the throw of this guy right away. We're going to take three damage from his Smuggler's Copter, but he's not going to gain value from the Feldar, or Falconrath Gorger, um, which is what he would want to do, because he would then attack with the Smuggler's Copter and hopefully discard a, a Vampire and then get value off of with it. Because uh, this guy, um, each Vampire creature you control ha uh, that isn't on the battlefield has Madness. So we basically use a Smuggler Copper to loot, draw a card, discard a card, discard a vampire, play it for free. Um, which is super rad. Rad in concept. I mean, this is actually a really cool... Actually, I'm assuming we're playing a vampire deck, which is kind of funny. <laughs> not only not my vampire deck, but it is a vampire deck. So, oh, he's actually throwing away a card that has Madness. Now that this uh, beer isn't, like, exploding my mouth, it's actually pretty good. Um... Yeah, look, no art. It's a no art card again. Uh, it's asylum. It's a asylum visitor. So basically, it's similar to um, what's what I'm looking for. What's card? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> basically, draws some cards and loses life if there is no cards in his hand or that player's hand. Yeah. Okay, our turn. Uh, we're gonna make him lose that creature, by the way. Because I don't... Bob! There you go. Dark Confident. Ah, that's the one. Sometimes I just draw a blank on cards. Um, happens actually quite often, unfortunately. Um, so, we can do one of two things. One, we can play Gatekeeper and make him sack his Asylum Wanderer. Which is not a terrible idea. The other thing we can also do in response is we can also just play our Desecration Demon. Um, which is actually probably the better bet. Because he can't crew the Smuggler's Copter anymore because we'll just kill it. Because we have flying. So, Desecration Demon. Here you go. Win condition is on the table. Yes. Feels nice playing a deck that's not super duper combo-y. I do like combo decks, but I'm more of a fan of combo decks when it gets to, like, paper magic. Hmm. Hmm. 
super duper carbonated beer. So speaking of beer and speaking of brewing with brewing, um, are any of you out there also brewers? Do you guys brew? Um, this is my question. Uh, Gatekeeper of Malakar. That's a sad face. That's my. I just made the saddest face possible. Because now I have to sacrifice my Desecration Demon. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's okay, I have a second one. Um, but doesn't mean I'm not going to take much damage. Um, I brew decks only. Yeah, yeah. Brewing decks is, is another form of good brewing as well. Uh, only commander decks for now. Um, I mean, it's fine. Um, brewing is a very interesting thing. It takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of energy. Um, but it is fun. And our opponent is swinging in for six. Ouch. So again, this is what I want to do. That's what I want to do a series called Brewing with a Brew, where we like sit down and we like brew out a deck. Uh, we come up with an idea, we choose a couple cards or a card we want to brew, and then we just start brewing, and then we do some maybe testing on X-Mage and brew, brew, brew. And I drink brews while we do it, which is, would be the funny part, I think. The funny part of it all. Um, I have a fun cat deck list. Um, if you have, Ben, feel free to send that in. Um, if you guys want to send lists for me to take a look at, and you know, sometimes I might feature them, um, it's through the Facebook page where you do that. Um, hi, I... How about brewing modern god phalanxes gifted deck? That would be interesting. I agree, that would be very interesting. I may keep in mind. Okay. Geit's Verdict. Hmm. So, this is annoying. We could also Gatekeeper him. We could also Desecration Demon him. Uh, Stuff of the Pact is not really going to be super handy to us right now. I think we're going to Desecration Demon again. Unlikely that he has another Gatekeeper. Possible, but unlikely. Um, so yeah. Mono blue, five color, good stuff. <laughs> uh, is that even a deck you could possibly brew? Five color, good stuff, that's also mono blue. Um, I guess, theoretically, there's ways of cheating. There's lots of ways of cheating stuff in, so maybe. Um, CCBM, Tron doesn't like Palooza much. Not that anyone does. Interesting. Um, I'm not really sure if I know what Panusa is, to be quite honest. Um, and it is our main phase still. Go to our opponent's turn, focusing on playing a little bit. Ponza. Ah, yes. Dramatic entrance deck. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, what do we think here? So our opponent definitely has the upper hand. Uh, obviously, they can't be swinging in with Smuggler's Copter. And anything they do swing in, we're probably just going to, like, you know, totally kill. Mind you, in, in Marsh Flats, if he gets something that has white... Okay, apparently he's not. He's always playing a black-red. He has Marsh Flats probably because they're, like, a budget version or because he just wants more Bloodstained Myers, technically. Um, double Lightning Bolt or Single Lightning Bolt? What is he thinking? Double lightning bolt. Oh man. Well, that's hard. That is a uh, that is a hard truth right there, my friend. Uh, captivating vampire. Hmm. That is a thing. So you want an anti net deck that defeats Tron and Death Shadow. Um, I believe people have pointed out that Hate Bears is the way to fight against both Tron and Death Shadow. Um, highly recommend looking into building one. Destroying lands is amazing against Tron. This is also true. Um, actually, the... Um, what is it? I'm drawing a blank. Mardu Reanimator deck that I have is actually quite good against Tron as well. Largely because it is a land destruction deck. That is the whole point of it. Land destruction, destroying stuff. Pretty cool. Uh, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We are down to 1. I don't think we can win this one. I think we're going to need to go to the sideboard and fix our current problem. I think this is what's going to happen. We're down to one. Do we have anything else that is worth pulling? Do we have anything that can save us? I think the answer is going to be no. Okay, we are going to sideboard. We are going to concede this game. Go to two. Go to number two. Uh, so we're playing against Black Red Vampires. What 
what what do we play against this? What do we have in here that actually plays against that? Well, for starters, Doomblade is almost not any good in this deck. Uh, against this matchup, Go for the Throat is okay. Um, I think having a couple board wipes is good. Suffer the Past is not good. Um, Bile Blight, maybe? Maybe? Uh, yeah, we'll throw the Bile Blight. And we're going to take out two Doom Blades and a single Go for the Throat. Uh, actually, don't even take out two. No, don't even take out the Go for the Throat. Just take out two Doom Blades. That really, that's it? Okay, well, that's what we're going with, guys. Shipping it back. Shipping it back. Uh, get rid of this. And we are going to play first. Um, hopefully this will actually go a little bit better. Um, yeah. Mono red land destruction? That, is that, like, actually... No, can't keep that. Um, is that actually... Can't keep this either. Wow, we are going down, guys. Wow. Check that. Five. Four. Really? We're gonna keep three land... Or three? <laughs> wow, that was, um... That was really awesome. I'm not gonna lie. That was, like, the most awesome thing I've ever had happen to me in the history of magic. Ever. Ever, ever. Huh. Well, that's the thing that happens. Let me open up these graveyards here so I'm not covering up the cards on you guys. That was rough. I can't believe that happened. It was like no land, no land, no land, all the way down to three cards. Ouch. Um, hmm. Okay. What is our opponent... Uh, wait, wait, I would say what is our opponent playing? We know what our opponent's playing. Um, trying to think of, I'm actually like trying to think like, what do I need to do here? Like, how do I at this point win the game? Um, because I mean, I have a land on top, um, but that doesn't allow me to win the game. I don't know. I'm like, I'm wondering, can we actually win the game right now? That's, that's what I'm currently wondering. Like, we need to draw another land. Um, even, we don't have even enough one drops in this deck that like matter at this point. Yeah. Dang. Dang, guys. Dang. Uh, well, let's see if we can get ourselves out of this. Um, I don't think we can. I think we are going to lose this this game super bad. Okay, well, ship it to our opponent's turn. Uh, we're going to give it a couple more turns before we concede. I think we actually need to concede on this uh, this game. I don't think we can actually physically win. I don't know how... Don't know how we win. This is my problem. Um, I just posted the cat deck to the Facebook page. Awesome. I will take a look at it after the stream, and then I will let you know. Um, I am excited, I mean, because I have seen cats running around in standard, and they're pretty cool, but, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, so, Jen, what? Jansif? We're playing mono black control right now. Um, unfortunately, um, we got, like, uh, it was, it was, what? No lands, no lands, no lands, all the way down to three. So, we likely are not gonna win. So, yeah. Unless you're asking what other people are playing right now, that is also a very interesting question. Um, what are you guys playing right now? That is that is actually a very good question to ask you guys. What decks are you guys playing right now? Or what is your favorite deck to play right now, um, if you had to choose one? Swing for four again. <laughs> don't know how we. I don't know how we get around this, guys. I don't. We do we have a doom blade in hand. I literally don't think we can win this. I don't. Yeah. Uh, watched your video for uh, of your drawing. How do you draw your monster with your logo? Um, how, what? How did I draw my monster? Oh, no, did I draw it? Sorry. <sighs> Reading. Strong point. Um, actually, the monster that's in my logo, um, is actually, I originally, because I, uh, backing up, this is a long story. Story time with Adrian. Um, I originally started out, giant, or started making Giant Monster Games as a board game design company, because I also do board game design, along with brewing and playing magic and all these other crazy things. Um, and with the board game design stuff, I started a company called Giant Monster Games, and I was had a game. I had a game that was getting really close to going to Kickstarter called um, World Defense Force, where the players play as like the Power Rangers, I guess you could say, um, and they're fighting giant monsters. Um, with this, I actually commissioned a lot of the art. So the giant, the monster in my like my logo and stuff like this is actually the monster from that game, or one of them. There's three of them. Um, so he's from that. Uh, yeah. So that's where that monster comes from. I'm just kind of repurposing stuff that, you know, I didn't use in the past. 
So, yeah. That's where the monster from Giant Monster Games comes from. Um, one day you may see a new monster that comes up. Uh, so, on Twitch, we have some people playing um, mid-range for modern. Black, white, mid-range. Nice. And Yizen for EDH. Okay, guys, I don't see how we, we win this. I think we are literally about to die. So, <laughs> let's... Let's go to um, the next game, I guess. GG opponent, uh, mostly because we got RNG to death, which sucks. Losing games to RNG is like the worst feeling in the entire world, not gonna lie. Um, would you like me to send you my Mono Red Land Destruction deck? I would, I would really be interested in seeing Mono Red Land Destruction. Um, that would be, that'd be really interesting for me. Uh, Martyr Reanimator Control is what I've been playing. Sweet, Black Control, um, if this is a land, I think it's too little too late. I mean, we don't have enough to... We needed four. Okay, well, we're going to go to uh, the next game. Uh, conceding the game, let's go back to the full screen. Let's uh, drink some more beers and talk about stuff, specifically what people are currently playing, um, because I think that would be interesting to me a little bit. Um, it also give me time to drink more of this extremely carbonated beer. Um, you guys sent in Deemer Control, uh, Mono Green Land Destruction. Um, that is also a you know a very valuable deck, viable deck as well. Um, I've played against a red green land destruction deck that just wiped me like three times. I played against it like back to back to back and got just like super wiped. <sniffs> kind of hard. Um, on Twitch. Um, he skipped out. Okay, hold on. He skipped over Nick Fit for Legacy. I don't quite know what you're talking about. Sorry, Twitch. Um, yeah. How many people we got over on? Uh, how many people are watching now? Actually, what do we got? Let me refresh these pages here. So, Twitch, we have 11 viewers. Welcome all 11 of you to the live stream. We are uh, probably about halfway through. I think we've been going for. Well, what time is it now? It's 8:30. Started around 6.30. We've been going for a couple hours. We probably have another hour before we wrap up tonight. Um, and we're going to try another get a couple more games in here. Uh, and on YouTube, how many people we got viewing on YouTube right now? That is my next question. So, yeah. Um, so, actually, here's the next question. Here's a good question for you guys. I actually was thinking about this one. What day of the week is best in the evenings around this time, I should say, is best for you guys for live streaming? I've been kind of thinking of trying to do live streamings on Wednesdays because they're usually pretty good for me. Um, and they don't necessarily compete with, hey, 40, 48 people. Awesome. Um, and they don't really compete with Saffron Olive. So um, this is my current idea. Um, kind of interested if this is a good time for you guys as well because, you know, I want to be playing games that you, know, you guys are interested in playing as well. So, yeah. Okay. Um, what is the second deck we're playing? We are going to play... What did I say? What was the second deck we were playing, guys? Was it Martyr Reanimator or was it Tron? Um, I can't remember. The first one I see that comes up on any of the chats is going to be the one I'm playing. So is it going to be Tron or is it going to be Martyr Reanimator? Go. Let me know. Which one is it going to be? I'm brewing Teamer Land Destruction. That is <laughs> Tron. Okay. Steve called it first. We're playing Tron. Oh, goats. We were going to play goats. That was what it was going to be. Okay, we're going to play Tron first, then we're going to play goats second. Um, just because it'd be good to get in some actual, like, some games of, like, a little bit higher index as well. Um, not gonna lie, we're gonna play in tournament, ah, we're gonna play just for fun. Better play just for fun. Okay, um, choosing a deck, we are gonna choose Tron. Where are you, Tron? You are right here, green, red, Tron. Really more mono green Tron than it is green, red, but there is some red cards in there. And let's launch it, I guess. All right. We are going to play, go over to MTGO, we are going to play some Tron. Okay, start game. For those that don't know, I should also shrink these back down. Sorry, guys, let me just, should have cleaned up my windows before I sent you guys back over here. Uh, goats is next. Remind, remind me, as soon as this game is racking up, wrapping up, we are going to play Goats next. Um, make this a little bit smaller, so you guys don't have little white borders on the side. We are going to play first. Because that would be rad. Uh, Wednesdays. Wednesdays is good for you. Excellent. Wednesdays are also good for me. Um, starting hand. Two lands. A couple of different ways of finding lands. 
Mm, yeah, I think we can keep this. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna keep this. I think it's actually it's completely playable. And yeah, main phase, power plant, map, go. If we draw into another piece of Tron, we are looking happy. If not, then we'll see where we go. Okay. Hmm. Arbor Elf. This could be many things. Maybe we'll be playing against Paradox Elves. Wouldn't that be crazy? Paradox Elves deck. Um, Sphere. That's not really what we want. Uh, so we have two things we can do. We can probably Sylvan Scrying, which might be the best bet. Um, yeah. Let's go Sylvan Scrying. Not, uh, necessarily the... Hold on, hold on. No, back up, back up. Uh, is that worth it? No. Yes. Okay, so we're going to Sylvan Scrying, grabbing a piece of Tron, and then we'll grab... Next turn, we'll have to grab the next piece of Tron. Um, let's make this bigger, so we can all see what's going on over here. Uh, let's grab a tower, because we have a plant, and then ship it to our opponent's turn. Uh, Five-colored goats. <laughs> you guys just want to see goats. I just want to see goats. It's all that matters. Does it have goats in it? Awesome. I want to see it. That is the, the mentality of the chat room right now. Goats? Yeah, I'll play goats. Have you thought of thought of goats? Hey, cool. We're playing against someone that knows the channel. Thanks. Live streaming now. Uh, I wonder if the the person that we are playing against is playing in, uh, or is actually in the live chat right now. Our opponent is a fan of Giant Monster Games. Uh, Utopia Sprawl. It may be we could be playing a Paradox Elves deck or something that is similar, or maybe he is playing. <laughs> The mono green land destruction deck we've talked about, which totally beats down Tron. So he's like, okay, they're gonna play Tron, gotta play this. Maybe that's that's what happened. We'll take one damage from his Arbor of Elves. And then. 10 color Storm Crow. Is that. What, is that even possible? I don't think that's possible. <laughs> play Twin. Uh, I don't have a Twin deck, sorry. Uh, I guess I was supposed to type that. I was supposed to like type in the like thing. Like I don't have twins. Sorry, um, but I don't have a twin deck. Um, it's not a deck that I have built. It is something that I have considered building. Um, a twinless twin deck. Um, I think you can build it on a budget. Kiki Jiki is not super expensive because it's not really big in the like meta right now, but it is playable potentially. Okay, <sighs> we need another land. Okay, so we're gonna play the tower, and I guess we could. Theoretically, play Sphere, and then we can crack Map to get the last piece of Tron on his turn. So, do in response to him potentially doing something, and then next turn we'll play Sphere, Hellkite, or something like this. We'll play, we'll play something big. We'll play big, big scary stuff. So yeah, uh, Twitch chat is far different in what you see and what you play. YouTubers chat. I yeah, um, yeah. YouTube chat is a lot like quicker, it uh, seems like, and uh, Twitch chat is a little bit slower. So kind of getting used to like trying to manage both. I think there's a couple websites that you can actually mix the two chats together when the I read. So I'm actually just looking at one big chat rather than trying to like multitask between two chats. So eventually this will get itself sorted out. Harmonize. Um, what is our opponent playing? <laughs> like realistically, what is our opponent playing? Um, it looks like it might go off at any time. I'm assuming it's not a Paradox Elves deck. Uh, which deck do you believe is the most fun in your budget series? Um, budget deck specifically? Um, so I guess that becomes a question, like, because I enjoy playing certain decks. I don't know if that's necessarily the same for everyone. Tron is fun to play, um, but it's not super budget. I mean, this is like a $90 Tron deck. It might be a little bit cheaper now, um, but Tron technically is a, is a very fun deck to play, and if it's if you're considering a budget. Uh, I like the Goblins deck, which is a $40 deck, and it tends to be quite competitive. Um, but the thing about that is it's like super aggro. Like, you're aiming to win on turn 3, turn 4. <laughs> like, go, 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 win. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, opponent is on Mono Green Devotion. Okay. Good to know. Um, so that means they may be dropping, like, Hydras or something else big. There's a lot of things you can be doing with Mono Green Devotion. If he's playing a budget deck, hey, explore. Uh, he's playing a... <sighs> Guys, I just totally forgot to do map. 
Too busy talking with you guys, not enough time looking at uh, the actual game board. Uh, well, because of that, I think we... Uh, lame sauce. Punt counter number six. We need. I, I agree. Whoever mentioned that, someone from Twitch streaming, mentioned that we need a punt counter. That is 100% something we need. Punt counter is what we need. Hey, Tempest and a computer. Welcome to the stream. Unless you've been here for a while and you're just lurking, then welcome to the stream anyways. Um, we're going to get a mine. We're going to play that mine. And we have five mana. Um, I think we're going to try and dig, guys. We're going to try and dig. Um, by digging, we're going to grab three, crack, making green. And... Just pay, yeah, <laughs> pay with that, uh, which means we draw, we draw prior, priorless vault, guys. It's a perilous vault. Um, I told you this is like one of those cards that like just can't read very well. So it's perilous, as in like perilous. Uh, first time on the stream, thanks Tempest. I'm glad you are here. Um, I used you as uh, one of the comments in one of the comments uh, a while ago back. Okay. Um, what else? We have three. We have five mana still, and mana, five mana is not enough to play anything big. We could play, again, we could play Perilous Vault, um, and it kind of will allow us to wipe the board. I think that's what we kind of need to do. Bam. And we don't have to crack it this turn, but next turn we'll crack it and basically wipe his board. And then we'll go to the next, uh, yeah. So we'll go to the next turn, let him swing in, hopefully he doesn't go off, and then uh, Perilous Vault... Uh, yes, Perilous Vault is definitely the budget Oblivion Stone. For those who don't know, it literally does almost the exact same thing as Oblivion Stone, except Oblivion Stone, you can actually choose um, what things don't get blown up, where Perilous Vault blows up just everything. Exile all non-land permanents. Very good way. Also get rid of stuff if Graveyard. It actually has some pretty good you know, value as well, because, I mean, if stuff goes to the Graveyard, if you're playing against Dredge, like this kills a Dredge deck almost entirely. <laughs> just like dead. Um, like, oh, look, you have all these, like, crazy stuff? No. Um, oh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, punt counter number seven? I mean, yeah, okay. That's pretty bad on my part. I should have played the the sphere. Pretty. Punt six. Okay, good. Whew. Secondly, I thought I was on punt number seven, which is just unacceptable. Try not to get to ten punts. Keep it under ten punts in a, in a single stream, I think, is the, the objective at this point. So, jeez. Uh, Primal Command, he gains 7 life. That's fine, um, because we're going to wipe the board next turn. Hey, he has uh, Nyctos, finally. So this is what uh, the Mono Green decks are, Mono Green Devotion, or any Devotion deck is running, aiming to run, um, because it adds mana to your pool equal to the amount, uh, equal to your uh, Devotion to that color. So right now, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, um, but he has to pay 2, so he's actually going to get 2 out of it, which is rad. What is the punishment for nine for ten punts? I don't know. That's that seems like a very good question for you guys. What should the punishment be if I get to ten punts in a single stream? What What do you think it should be? I, I'm I'm interested in hearing. More beer on the carpet. Thankfully, I have hardwood floors, um, or laminate hardwood floors, faux hardwood floors. Um, but yeah, I'll just have to I, you know, pour a beer onto the floor as my punishment. I'm not going to chug this beer because it is super duper carbonated and literally just taking a sip already fills my mouth with bubbles, which is insane. Um, <laughs> bear or beer? Uh, well, I'm Canadian, so it's pronounced beer, but it sounds a lot like bear because that's a weird Canadian pronunciation, I think. Uh, play four matches with five colored coats is the punishment <laughs> for ten punts. Uh, play an extra game. You have to play with 60... <laughs> basics in the ladder <laughs> just go in <laughs> but if okay so if i go and play ladder with a 60 a 60 basic land deck i literally need to like constantly message my opponent being like oh man i keep drawing lands oh man mana flooded that's the way it have to be that's like that's the objective uh okay so uh we may as well crack this guy right now just get rid of stuff um so five Rip. all of it go Perilous Vault blows up stuff. Uh, we are sitting on three mana. So we can play and draw Sphere. I guess, yeah. It's probably going to be the best bet. Is play Sphere. Uh, crack Sphere and play Explore. Hopefully we draw into a land. So uh, get a green. 
anyone. Uh, we draw into a power plant. Sweet. Um, now the question is, do we just play Explorer? I guess we just play Explorer. Because if we draw a land, we get to play it. And if not, we draw into something that's hopefully relevant. Or we get to draw into something that will hopefully be playable. Uh, that's not playable. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we'll ship it to our opponent's turn then. Um, yeah, this is a... Oh, that was a huge blowout. Agreed. Uh, blowing up everything our opponent has and like exiling it is pretty brutal. Um... <laughs> Okay, so Sean has pr uh, you know, proposed that my punishment should be play a game, but make the sound effects for each creature. You have to assume they what they would sound like. <laughs> That's the punishment for ten punts. So I have to like make like howling noises for stuff. That would be, oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay, so next stream I will have a punt counter up and running, which we will then be able to update and add punt stuff to. Super funny stuff. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized that our opponent that we're playing against right now uh, just said, "Oh, I'm going to be losing on live stream. This is this is not fun at all." <laughs> um, okay, so what do we think, guys? This is your call. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on this one. So what do you guys think? Bane of Balagid, which is probably the best bet. Um, Steel Hellkite, which allows us to destroy stuff from him, or Mere Battle Sphere, which is probably the funniest of all of the win conditions. Which of the three should I be playing for? Uh, which one should I play right now? We're gonna play mm, probably two. We could actually probably play Beard Battle Sphere and something. Uh, hold on, what do we have? We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we can't play both. We can't play all of them. We can play, I think, Battle Sphere. Let's play Battle Sphere. Sorry, guys, I, I just decided to, to go with Battle Sphere. Battle Sphere is super funny, though. Come on, we, we get a whole bunch of mirrors, and then when we attack with it, we can just tap down our mirrors and just do direct damage. It's super funny. It's super funny. I love, I love Mirror Battle Sphere. It's one of those cards that makes me extremely happy deep down inside. I'm like, oh, but come back, I get all the funny, silly stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so much, so good. Okay, Mirror Battle Sphere is entally entering the battlefield. And what do we think? Just checking some stuff over here. Okay, Battle Sphere entering the battlefield. No. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to Twitch as well. Um, if you want to get more traction, uh, it's easier for me to be reading stuff on YouTube, largely because YouTube has bigger font in their, like, pop-out text box. Uh, so it's a lot easier for me to, like, read it at a glance than it is, like, trying to read stuff on the Twitch chat as a, at a glance. Um, sorry, if you're on Twitch, it's a lot easier for me to respond to you on, on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> never mind, come back to the Twitch chat. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, second main phase. Let's see. I think we're just going to play and explore. Because uh, if we draw into a land, we get to play it, and we get to draw into stuff potentially that is more relevant. Yeah. Just get get some draw action going on, as Jolt would play, would say. And we have a single mana. So if we do end up uh, drawing, like, a sphere, we can play it. Mmm, Chrome Sphere, you are now in play. Okay, ship it to our opponent's turn. Let's see if they have any idea what's about to happen to them. Oh boy. The opponent is the opponent should be playing a game blindfolded. Like <laughs> just like randomly clicking cards. That'd be so bad. Or maybe I should play a game where I have to like cover up the like the, the play area like here. Oh, what's this? Oh, when he deals damage he gets to draw cards. Okay, cool. Uh, does someone have a list for a Mere Tribal deck? Uh, I don't have a list for a Mere Tribal deck, but I have looked around at them. Um, like, it is potentially something you can build. They're not super competitive, but it is something, you know, possibly. Uh, okay. Okay, let's... What's going on? Uh, stopping by to say what up and love the videos and glad you're streaming. Thanks! Uh, the Maziard? I uh, names. Names are things. Uh, oh, it's 2.30 a.m. for you over there, Herbert. I'm glad you stopped by. You were, uh, you were in the stream earlier when I was doing a test stream. Hey, there's a mine. Okay, so what do we think? Do we... What do we think? I can just, uh, swing in with Mere Battlesphere? Uh, yeah. Um... We could play Steel Hellkite and then destroy each non land permanent with Converted Mana Cost X, whose controller was dealt damage by Steel. Oh, I have to actually swing it with him. 
so I think we're going to play another Mirror Battle Sphere. Check this out. <laughs> another Mirror Battle Sphere. Because <laughs> it's super funny. <laughs> uh, it's 7.48 p.m. there. Uh, for the record, it is 8.39 for me in Montreal, Canada. Okay, another Mirror Battle Sphere. Get a bunch of mirrors. We're going to swing with this mirror, which is going to be hilarious. Going to be the funniest thing ever. Okay, begin combat. <laughs> Swinging with this guy. And does he have trample? That'd be really, really rad if he has trample. Let's just, let's, let's take a look. Uh, and deals X damage to any player. So he actually just gets to do, like, damage and get really big. Uh, okay. And now we're going to tap a bunch of mirrors down and do a bunch of direct damage to our opponent. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> yes, I want to do that. Uh... Intruder alarm deck. That is also a silly thing. Can I actually just... Oh, no, I can't. I can only... <sighs> this is fidgety as heck. Fidgety, fidgety, fidgety. There you go. Okay. Um, have you played Mine Tribal? I don't know what Mine Tribal is. I'm not going to lie. Okay. We are going to go to the second main phase. Is MTG bot not hooked up here or something? Uh, it is not. This is actually so. People on Twitch are asking about uh, deck lists and stuff. Um, I this is my first time streaming or one of my first time streaming, I should say. So uh, yeah, I don't have anything really hooked up. I didn't even know there was a MTG bot you can hook up on Twitch, which I will need to get hooked up now. That seems, that seems like a really good idea. Uh, so yeah, so if things aren't hooked up and running the way you would expect them to, largely because I didn't know that was a possibility. Um, let's crack the sphere right now. Neutral mana. World breaker. We don't have enough mana to play it, though. Uh, do we have enough to play? Uh, two, four, five. Nah. Not enough to play anything. Yeah, we're going to go to our opponent's turn. See what they have to say. What do you think, opponent? What do you think? Uh, where do you send my deck list? You can send your deck list uh, to, into the Giant Monster Games Facebook page. It's the easiest way. I try and check it often. Um, it's kind of the way I try to communicate mostly with you guys. Um, having them on, like, actual videos and stuff on the actual page is really, really hard for me to actually follow. So, uh, just because, I mean, there's a ton of comments and a ton of videos, and mm, YouTube isn't really good at, like, keeping conversations organized. So, yeah. Uh, what deck is this? This is Modern Budget uh, Tron. So, it's an Urza Tron deck, but it is a budget version. It's running around $90, um, which isn't really that budget. It's kind of like... I don't really consider it a budget deck. It's like a mid-budget deck. Um, and it's not like you can like get cheaper cards for it and still play it. I mean, this is like the cheapest you can probably make the deck. Um, do you run Mirror Entity in your GOATS deck? I do. I run, I think, three of them. Uh, because they are really, really good. And he got a whole bunch of Wasps that all have Death Touch. Which is pretty rad. Mountain. Um, I really need... I really, really need, uh, hmm. uh I think I win. <laughs> Sorry, I win, guys. Uh, I was like, oh my god, how do I get out of this? Uh, I don't need to get out of this. I'm just going to swing in and tap down everything with my mirror battle sphere and deal seven damage to him. So, we will go to attacks. Uh, we're just going to swing with one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, yep. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Um, bum, 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 bum. Selecting all of the cards on. Oh god, I like selecting some and then unselecting others, so that's really annoying. And that should be seven. Bam! Going to sideboard. Uh, okay. Uh, it won't let me post the link. Uh, I sent you a PM on Facebook. Yeah. So again, Facebook is the is the best way to do it. Just just send a message, PM on Facebook. Easiest way to get decks to me so I can take a look at them and you know give you guys some feedback or uh, potentially fe feature them as a deck in the future. Um, so we are going up against a Devotion deck. Um, Nature's Claim, uh, actually Pyroplasm is probably a good uh, idea. Probably two of them. Uh, we can take out what? Bane of Balaged, one of those can come out. Um, maybe two Balagheds can come out actually. Uh, and what else? I think that's really it. I mean, I'd put it in Nature's Claim, but yeah, Crumble to Dust is also good, but yeah, as well. Um, I think we'd rather just try and run them over. I think that's what we're going to do, running them back. Running it back! Um, 
Hmm. Okay. We are here for game number two. Um, we're obviously on the draw, and we have two pieces, which means... And, and map. So in theory, we have Tron on turn three, which is awesome. Uh, we are going to keep this. This is like the perfect hand. And we have a beer battle sphere, which is good as a turn three play, I think. Playing a seven drop on turn three is always fun. Our opponent plays Utopia Sprawl. Uh, huh. Well, interesting. Uh, lots of combo. So I just got like randomly reading comments off and saying, oh, and just saying random stuff. Okay, here we go. Expedition map has hit the table. And we are going to ship it to our opponent's turn. Next thing that will happen. Oh, and I forget. I need to open up some sideboards for you guys. So I would say out of all the like budget or you know, mostly budget decks I've made, this is probably the most competitive. If you are one of the people that are looking to like build a deck that is competitive, that like can, can be upgraded, this is like the deck you should be going with. Uh, Tron is a very good archetype right now in modern, and this is uh, definitely a good deck if you're looking to get into playing competitive modern. If you're looking to play some stuff for fun, yeah, your friends might not want to play with you too much if you've been playing this deck a lot. So, something to keep in mind. <laughs> Untapped target land. Hey, it's basically like a two-drop uh, Arbor Elf, which is going to go really handy with both of these clans. Ha. Huh. Pardon me. Pardon me. Um, okay. Hellkite. That is also going to be really handy. Um, actually, that's probably going to be the one we're going to play rather than Mere Battle Sphere because Hellkite we can actually use to destroy a lot of stuff. Uh, okay, ship it to our opponent's turn. And that's all we're doing because we're going to crack Expedition Map. You thought I was like 17 or 18. I am not. I am 33. <laughs> I, am, I am an old man. Comparatively, to some people. Um, yes, you sound much younger. I think it's because I put a lot of, like, inclination in my voice. I do a lot of the, like, talk up when I talk about things. So, that's a really bad example, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Don't forget to, yeah, don't forget to crack the map. Thank you. Um, I should just go like this. I should just hover over this the entire time. Um, yeah. Need to remember to crack this map this time. Otherwise, I, otherwise it's gonna suck. Um, <laughs> need to crack a map. Uh, I can't believe that. I mean, that was like punt, punt six. I don't want to, I don't want to get to ten punts because making the sounds of every single card I played, well, it sounds like fun. Um, do you, have you ever played an eight whack deck? This is coming from Twitch. The answer is yes. There's actually a $40 or $30 super budget version of, uh, eight whack goblins on the YouTube channel. And it's actually pretty good. It was actually the first deck we played of the night. Um, not necessarily in this video. We played it in another video um, as like a test video kind of thing. Um, and it is super fun. One on turn three because it was rad. Um, I don't play many budget decks, but my favorite deck is my favorite Safranova Squirrel deck. Squirrel decks are super fun. Um, I actually really like Safranova. I would love to actually like someday to be able to like do the back alley magic, like just play a casual game with him, do some commentary. I think this would be super cool, but... He does seem like he has, like, a full-time job out of what he does. So, yeah. I don't think he has much free time to say, hey, let's try out some cool new stuff where, you know, I do have this ability, which is super fun. Hmm. So, our opponent is about to play something really big. I'm assuming it is a wasp? A hornet? No, it's harmonized. Okay. Um, I have a semi-budget goblin deck. What's the price of your semi-budget goblin deck? What do you consider semi-budget? Uh, how about a five-color non-gauge watch Super Friends deck? Ah, I'm really leery to make a Super Friends deck, largely because Super Friends is not... It, it's not budget by any stretch of imagination. Like, even the most budgetist of budget Planeswalkers are still, like, five to ten bucks. Um, so... And, and I'm really kind of like, I don't really want to make a deck for the channel that is not at least somewhat budget, or at least that I would say, hey, go and play this deck, um, and to build a, hey, map, mapping, mapping. Um, so yeah, so I have, I mean, maybe down the road I'll try and make a Super Friends deck, like a semi-budget Super Friends deck, but right now, hmm, kind of 50-50 on it. And we need what we have in mind, we need a tower. Crack, I got it, guys. Hunt! Is that a minus one punt? No, I don't think that's a minus one punt. I think the fact that you guys had to remind me is like a not a minus one punt. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, okay, uh, okay. Going to our turn. Hey, we draw another land. Okay, so we'll throw down the tower. And I think we're going to throw down Steel Hellkite. Uh, because we can use it to basically blow up all of his little, little stuff. Specifically, like, Utopia Sprawls, which will then kill off his... Uh, kill off his... Uh, Shrine to Nyx, or Nyctos Shrine to Nyx, I guess is technically what it's called, uh, which will be good. Again, next turn, this is what's going to happen. The budget to a Squirrels deck is... Um, yes. Are you drunk? No. My voice is just getting very sore um, from streaming for almost three hours now. Um, actually, more like two and a half hours. Oh, canceled. Uh, Chromatic Sphere. I think you were the one I want to play. Uh, he's got like 15 mana, I know. Uh, it is super scary, so we need to get around to next turn. If we can survive to next turn, and he doesn't play something with flying, we can get him with Steel Hellkite and wipe his board. Which is the plan for us right now. Uh, is that why you're punting? Uh, probably, I mean, uh, I'm gonna say I'm punting a lot tonight, largely because I'm new to live streaming, uh, trying to figure out, like, how to best communicate with the chats, um, and how to, like play well communicating um also to like remember stuff like looking over here for what's going on on the the actual chats or chat uh, what's going on in the actual streams what's going on in the chats what's going on in the camera um so it's just a couple more things that i'm used to paying attention to so that's probably why i'm punting pretty hard um a goat devotion i mean technically the goats deck is a goat devotion deck that is that is what a goat deck usually is uh, just other things. <laughs> um, because, I mean, I've had about half a beer, because half of it's on my floor right now. Um, so, if I'm drunk off of half a beer in an hour in which I've been drinking it, that is a, uh, it's something else. Do I like, oh, tooth and nail. Ooh, this is exciting. Um, someone asks, uh, Rithcroft asks if I like Desolator Magic. There are some things that I quite like about Desolator Magic. He has some really cool content. There are other things about him that I think are a little bit too toxic. Um, as you may have noticed, just maybe, um, I tend to be a pretty positive, upbeat, yeah, this is awesome, this is cool kind of guy, um, and Desolator Magic tends to be... Uh, not so much sometimes. <laughs> Uh, Mono Red Burn Tron. I actually really want to try out Mono Red Burn Tron, and I think it's actually buildable on the budget as well. Remember the time our opponent played a Crater Hoof Behemoth and an Emrakul in the same turn? That just happened. And it's really scary. So, that is a thing. <laughs> and he's going to play another Tooth and Nail. Uh, I think we're going to go to Game 3, guys. I think we're about to go to Game 3. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. What do we need to put in? I think... Um, I think maybe putting in that land destruction might be a good idea. Maybe. I think getting rid of enchantments might be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. GG. GG is right, guys. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll give our opponent the joy of actually beating us. I'm just going to, like, skip through my turn and say yes to everything or no to everything. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Acidic Slimes eating my lands. Uh, yeah, remember that time? Uh, there we go. <laughs> go to game. Go to the next game. Yeah, I'm not even gonna block. I'm not even gonna block. I'm just gonna let them have it. I'm gonna let them have it. <laughs> okay, go to sideboard. Wow, that was a thing. Um, I almost think putting in two more pyroplasms is actually a pretty good idea. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. You could do a tree folk deck. I actually have been working on tree folk deck. There are some pretty cool things that you can do with tree folks that I really want to try out. Uh, Pyroplasms go in. Uh, Explore goes out. Uh, World Breaker. Do I want to keep World Breaker? Exile target artifact, enchantment, or land? Yes, World Breaker is actually really good. Um, I don't want to put in fog. I don't. I don't even know why it's in my sideboard to be honest. Um. Dang it, what else do I take out? Uh, Bane of... Another Bane? Hmm. Yeah, I think we take out another Bane, because he's not going to be exiling stuff that matters. Yeah. I don't like Emrakul in Tooth and Nail. Really? Eh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the thing about playing uh, Emrakul through Tooth and Nail is you don't get, like, I win the game. It's like, I need to win a turn. A way to turn to win the game if you play it. 
One, two, three. I think we're going to keep it. It's not a fast Tron hand, but we can Pyroplasm his board. I think that's what we need to do. Uh, we can also play map, like, right away. Uh, actually, playing map right away is not going to be the way to go. It's going to be playing Chromatic Sphere is going to be the way to go. That's a better first turn play. Okay. Uh, do you want my Mono Red Tron deck list? I do. Again, send all your, your deck lists to the Facebook page. Uh, that is the, the best way for me to see them. And, I mean, I would love to start featuring some of your guys' decks. Um, and if I do, I mean, uh, the Mardu Reanimator deck, which was actually uh, passed to me by a fan. Uh, I don't remember who off the top of my head right now. And so I, like, gave him credit. I was like, hey, this was deck was um, submitted by so-and-so. I changed it a little bit, I mean, to things that I'm like, oh, we could probably do this. Like, he didn't have a, like, a top-end uh, mana base for it. So I just added in a couple extra lands, changed a couple things around. So, yeah. Uh, can you PM me this list? I can't, but someone in the chat can probably go and grab the link and paste it in the description um, to the actual video. Um, if someone wants to do that, that'd be rad. Um, yeah. And another forest. Meh. Not the best thing. Um, well, we're not going to Pyroplasm next turn. So we're going to play and explore this turn. Not the best thing. We're going to play literally like uh, one of these two guys. Um, might as well play the mountain. And then we'll play the map. And then we'll ship it to our opponent's turn. Getting up on a thing. Um, oh, it won't let you guys paste the link. Uh, okay, let me give me one second here. As we wait for our opponent's stuff to do stuff, opponent to do stuff, I will actually go grab it myself. Uh, creator Studio. Okay. Doing the thing that untaps lands. Uh, should we pyro that? Do I, is it worth pyroing that right away? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, search for it on Giant Monster Games tapped out. That is also a good thing. Um, give me one second. I'm about to post it as well. Sorry guys, I'm not playing because I'm actually just grabbing the link so you guys can actually see what this deck actually is. And one second, and here you are. This is the link to the deck tech itself. Okay, um, so I think we can, what do I think? Uh, we can get some pieces of Tron going because we can mm, Sylvan Scrying. I think this has been the best bet. Skill, Sylvan Scrying, grabbing a piece of the map. Um, again, we don't need to pyro the board yet, so I'm not really worried about that. So we'll grab a tower. Oh, Stirrings first. Ah, Tempest, you are completely right. You guys are right. Should I, uh, is that a punt? Is that a punt? That's the, my next question. It Does that count as a punt? Maybe? Maybe? Um, maybe. I'm going to go... Stirring Forest, yeah. Mm. I agree. An Ancient Stirring probably would have been best because I had the extra mana to, again, still play other stuff. Half a punt. So I'm at 6.5. 6.5 punts. And... Okay. When he enters the battlefield, he draws a card. This guy is going to go away real fast. Um, can you do both? 6.5 punts. Getting close. Getting close to all the punts. Um, and end of turn, we are going to Expedition Map. Yeah, he's going to swing for one, which is fine. I'm okay with him swinging for one damage. Uh, end step, we are going to crack the map, get the last piece of Tron, and then we need to actually start digging up pieces of Tron. The nice thing about Ancient Stirrings, not Ancestral Stirrings for the record, Ancient Stirrings, uh, is Ancient Stirrings also can grab one of our win conditions because it grabs a colorless card. And almost all of our win conditions are colorless. Actually, all of our win conditions are colorless, <laughs> so that's a thing. Thing to keep in mind. Uh, pyro is easily the right move. You don't th you think? Oh yeah, so no pyro. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm like. Ah. Oh, by the way, I need to start playing a little bit faster uh, because I'm at four minutes and fifty-five seconds. So we're gonna focus on playing the game a little bit more and focus on chat a little bit less. Um, and we need to grab a power plant. Power plant. Okay. Our turn. 
Oh, you draw a power plant. Neat. Play a power plant. Um, play a stirrings? No. Uh, we play a star. We crack the star for, for green. See what we draw. Because if we draw into some good win conditions, mm, that's not a win condition. I think we need to... Uh, what? What do we do now? I think we pyro. Pyro the board. Hold on, why did it give me green mana? Oh, give me red. Um, and this. Pyro using colorless. I'd rather keep my green mana floating. Um, now we use stirrings, grabbing hopefully something of a win condition. Uh, I think world breaker is the win condition we are looking for. These can go back in any order. Oh, there's an any order button. Who would have guessed? Uh, green came from the sphere. You are correct. Uh, I have not enough to actually play world breaker because I have what? I have six mana total. Uh, so we can play the sphere and then ship it to our opponent's turn. And then next turn, we're going to play world breaker. One turn behind on the world breaker. Uh, sphere into stir. Yeah, I guess I could have actually played sphere again. Uh, or crack this sphere. Potentially. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, he's going to draw cards. Needing to play faster. Playing faster. Oh, man. All the stuff. Maybe we can draw into another pyro. That'd be really cool. Terrarion, you are not a very helpful thing right now. Um, let's play the power plant. Playing world breaker. Uh, tower. Yeah, there we go. All of the colors mana to pay for a world breaker. And what does world breaker kill? Uh, we can kill a creature. Uh, enter to artifact. Oh, no. Artifact. Enchantment or land. Uh, I guess it's going to be land. And targeting land, because it has to be land. Uh, Sphere Nister, half punt. Uh, I'm not super good at playing Tron, so maybe half punt is worth it. Maybe no punt is worth it. Uh, and let's. Uh, what do I do? Terrarion played. Uh, ship to our opponent. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't target Selkie with uh, with World Breaker because it's artifact creature or, or artifact um, enchantment or land. So yeah. Yeah. I also need to crack open these. I realize you guys can't see the graveyards. Yeah, so he's going to blow up one of the lands, which is fine, because I don't think it's enough to actually stop us at this point, assuming we don't go in the clock. That's that's the scary point right now, is uh, the clock is not on our side. Not at this point. Not at this point. Uh, the art is wonky. Uh, this is a qu question from Twitch. Um, largely because my, uh, my empty Joe, I don't know why, forever has done this, where it creates weird, hey, that really sucks. Why did I just play land? I don't know. Um, sorry guys, just playing lands. Okay. Going to combat, swinging in with World Breaker. Um, seven punts, that is a solid punt there, I'm not gonna lie, playing the forest without thinking because I could have cracked these and drawn, drawn cards. That is a, that is a solid punt. I think we're at a solid eight punts right now. Um, our opponent is probably not going to block any of that, or if he does block, so yeah. Oh, Death Touch. Sweet. That's rad. Uh, it's fine. We can actually bring it back. Punt eight. Yep. Agreed. Punt eight. Um, World Breaker. We can do this at our end step. Ship to our opponent's turn. On their end step, we need to bring World Breaker back. Then we can actually pull up uh, Destroy Nyctos. Again, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if we have enough time or power. Um, we have enough. We can easily cast him as well. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I lied. I lied to you guys. Hmm. Should have probably, at the at my end step, I should have actually probably cracked these just to draw. Uh, mind you, I can do it for basically zero mana. Um, I did attack. Okay, we're gonna yeah we're gonna have to crack these for zero mana and just draw an extra two cards. That is gonna be the game plan right now. 
Um, uh, yeah, trading with acidic slime was not worth it. I'm not gonna lie. I agree with you 100%. Um, attacking is not terrible, but I think holding up might have been better. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna be go to cycle. Is gonna be the plan. Again. Um, okay, here's the question: Do we pull World Breaker back at the on our end step? Um, I think we pull back World Breaker on our end step and try and get. <sighs> Blame the punts on drinking. Ah, eh, I mean I've had like less. I've had a beer in under in just over an hour. Not really that punty. I uh, uh, what's the best one to play? Uh, especially in a minute. Do I World Breaker back? Sacrificing what? Uh, I think I do World Breaker back. No, not not now. Do it in step. Um, he's willing to swing in for what four? Um, return World Breaker. I agree. I think this is the best line of play. Um, and then hopefully we can cycle into another land. Fingers crossed. Okay, second main end. World Breaker comes back. One, two, three. Uh, sacrificing a land. Forest. Return to my hand. Expedition map is really good. Um, so we play Expedition map with red. Um, we crack. <sighs> yeah. Cracking map like this. And we need to grab a tower. Uh, we play tower. We we need to crack this guy for green. Yep. I think we're going to go to time, guys. Uh, World Breaker. I uh, probably could have Terrarion. I'm not sure if it's actually really worth it. Uh, I don't think it's actually worth it. Um, because we would have drawn a card that probably wouldn't have done us any good. Uh, we need to blow up Nyctos, uh, because it is what's going to get him a ton of mana. Uh, I don't think... You could have played the forest before cracking the map uh, to get extra Tron mana. Yeah, but if I played that, I wouldn't have been able to play the Tron piece. If I actually would have cracked the map first, then I wouldn't have actually got the Tron piece. Uh, because I can only play one land a turn, turns out. Oh, and it's me just sitting on my clock. And we're, we're going to lose, guys. We're going to lose on time. That's what's going to happen here. Ah. <sighs> That's a solid nine punts. Nine punts total. Um, yeah. You're thinking. <laughs> this is what really what's going on. Yeah, that's... Uh, usually if I'm playing games, I'm like thinking quicker sometimes, but not always. Well, GG opponent. Let's actually uh, tell him a GG. GG... I'm too slow. Too slow. Yeah. Well, uh, if your opponent wins here, at least you killed Nyctos. And then he played another one. <laughs> Doesn't feel that good. Uh, okay, Exidic Slime. He would have not got around it anyways. I think he would have actually won this match simply based on blowing up more of our stuff. So, well, uh, we didn't win on Tron. It's okay, we played it. Um, you know, it was probably the best bet we had. Um, I definitely made a number of punts, but I got like, I think I got three punts or four punts at least on Tron alone. So, yeah, it's pretty hard. We are going to play Goats next where I'm okay if I punt a little bit because Goats is super duper, super, super duper silly. Damn you, stream. Yeah. Oh, well, it's all good. It's all good. Next game. Can't win them all. Can't win them all. At least we get to play them. That's, uh, that's what matters. Okay, I think my beer is actually empty now. Oh well. I do have another one here if I really need it, but I don't think I need it. No, oh, wait, hold on. Do I get 10 punts for for losing the match? I mean, I think it's it's viable. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we lost that one here. Reveal hand to our opponent if they want to see it. We're going to go to the play library, switch back to full screen for two seconds. Wipe off the sweatiness that I am accumulating from having a bunch of lights turned on. 
And I believe it is time for goats. Um, how many people do we got watching now? I'm gonna check out Twitch. Twitch, we have 17 viewers. Welcome all 17 of you that are following on Twitch right now. And how many people do we actually have on the uh, the YouTube? Um, also, if you're watching from Twitch as well, by the way, I actually have a YouTube channel where the channel is largely dedicated at making fun, um, somewhat casual, mm, playable um, budget decks for Magic, specifically for Modern. There's my pitch. Um, and we're going to be playing Goats next, so let me actually throw Goats up up. Um, well, we actually just talk, talk full screen here. 46 players, 47, 42nd, 47 viewers on YouTube. Welcome everyone that is watching on YouTube and walking, watching on Twitch. Um, we are playing Goats next. That is a thing we are about to do. Okay. Hit play. And then once that comes up, we are about to see what we actually do. That really doesn't make any sense. I'm just kind of saying random words at this point, I think. Um, specifically for that. <laughs> After the Goats, we want to try Elves. Okay. Depending on what time it is, uh, we may do that. Because um, it is already 10 after 9 here. Uh, we started at, what, 6.30? We've been almost 3 hours, so... Okay. Uh, let's switch over to the actual MTGO game where we will be playing. Uh, we won the roll. <laughs> we are playing goats. Oh, boy. Uh, do you have any hate bears? I do not have a hate bears deck. A lot of people have been asking for it. I'm going to actually work on making one uh, soon, I guess. Uh, what do I think is opening hand as well? Ugh. I... I don't think this is actually a keepable opening hand, simply because we don't have any, like... This deck has a lot of two drops, and we have all three drops. We're gonna mulligan it away. Hopefully we get something better. Uh, this is not better. This is this is strictly worse. This is marginally keepable. Uh, Blessed Alliance. Hmm. Do I want Blessed Alliance? Uh, four life tap creatures, sure. I think it's I think it's fine to put on top. Okay, uh, we're playing first. Play a plane, ship it to our opponent. Loop. Um, wow, you didn't know it's been going for long? Yeah, it's been going for a while. Um, yeah, three hours almost at this point, so it has been fun. It's been it's been some good times. Um, how about hate goats? <laughs> oh no, what have I started? I, I should have never made a goats deck. That's like that's like opening the the floodgates. It's like if I made like a squirrels deck. It's just like what what comes from this? It's just everything is squirrels related at this point. Uh, experimental one. So I'm assuming we're either playing against the like token, like the one-one counter ramp deck, uh, or we're playing against uh, green stompy. That's my guess. That's my guesses. Uh, how about care bears? <laughs> Long-running jokes here. Um, Mardu MBD next. What is MDD? I'm drawing a blank on what is MBD. Uh, how about care goats? Hmm. How about them? Uh, let's play Precinct Captain. And ship it to our opponent's turn. Hate Squirrels. That would be, I think that would be the best one. But I mean, it's hard to hate Squirrels. I feel like my, I would like lose subscribers on the channel if I was like, hate Squirrels. Because they'd be like, oh, do you, you hate Squirrels? How do you hate Squirrels? They're, they're small little, you know, delicious things. Um, Cleveland, you missed out. We already played Mono Black. Oh, Mono Black Devotion. Uh, we played Mono Black Control earlier today. I thought you were asking about playing the Mono Black Control deck, which we have already played today. Unfortunately, I did really bad with it. Like, ugh, bad. A little bit of it. Um, speaking of the unset that's coming out, I may try and do some unset drafts if it comes to MTGO, which I'm assuming it will. Um, I think that'd be kind of a fun thing. I mean, because it's kind of designed to be kind of silly and lighthearted, so. And he plays another experimental one. Hmm. Well, that's fine for me. And a Dryad Militant. So that's going to fire off both of those guys. Which is a thing that I don't really like to see. Um, so this guy here. We can tap up to two target creatures. Oh, untap. Target opponent's exact creature as well. Uh, not an unset. <laughs> yes, do unset drafts. I think unset drafts would be fun. Um, oh. Thank you, uh, Frank Loves Guts Shot. Frank Loves Guts Shot. Uh, MDB stands for Mono Black Devotion. Um, I'm sure someone actually said that in the YouTube chat as well. I just didn't put two and two together. Uh, can we play Mono Blue Tron? I don't have a Mono Blue Tron deck, but it is a deck that I have considered making. 
um, because Mono Blue Tron is technically rolling over into budget. There's a couple cards that are not very budget, but it's pretty budget nowadays. Five color goat equipment burn control. At this point, you're just stitching as many potential things together as possible. Um, so hold on. So white Knight of the White Orchid. For the record, when it comes into play, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a land card and put it in the battlefield. Uh, well, that's that doesn't really help us out too much. Um, I. Th I think we kind of just need to play and sit. Uh, so let's play Ghost Quarter and ship it to our opponent's turn. Nothing too much we're going to do on our turn. Uh, yeah, nothing we're really actually actually doing at all. Uh, we're not attacking either because I don't really want to trade with him because he'll just double block and you know take out this guy. Uh, and ben says, yep, he's just stringing random words together. So yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing that happens. Uh, Modern Slivers Tribal. Uh, it is a th it is a deck that is completely doable. The problem about modern uh, about doing any slivers deck, to be quite honest, is they're not very they're not very budget. <laughs> to make a good one, they're not very budget. Um, so yeah, uh, and Infect is definitely a deck that you'll be seeing soonish because it is super budget to build. Um, I think we can make an Infect deck for under thirty bucks, which is uh, oh. Uh, so you're gonna go. Here, I guess. And then we're going to go and play Blessed Alliance, I think. I think that's the, the plan. Declare a blocker step. Yes. Uh, target opponent sacrifices an attacking creature. I think this is what... Uh, I totally punted there. That's a punt, guys. That is a solid punt. I actually should have not done that. I should have uh, done that first. Cancel. We're not going to play for it. We're going to just take the 4 damage. Uh, Sliver's expensive. Lol. Eh, it could be. Um, be sure to put lots, uh, run lots of Hexproof. Uh, yeah, I mean, Infect decks need, like, Blossoming Defense and other de other cards, so you can't just destroy their creatures with Infect, because that's kind of the weakness behind Infect and some other decks that rely on specific creatures, is just things get destroyed really easily nowadays in Modern, so... Uh, yeah, 10 punts. I don't want to make the sounds of the creatures, guys. That doesn't sound like fun at all. Uh, my turn, Mentor of the Meek. Whenever you cast a creature with power to a less, that does sound fantastic. I think it is so fantastic, I think we're actually going to play it. Um, do I play it? I think we play it. Uh, play Mentor of the Meek. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's a punishment, because you don't want to do it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So Mentor of the Meek, he's like, you guys need to do this because you're meek and weak. This is my, this is what the Mentor of the Meek sound like. They, they sound like gangsters, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're just going to ship it to our opponent's turn. Kevin's Souls and Slivers is expensive. It is super expensive. Um, same, same with um, Mutavolt in Slivers, which is really, really handy in Slivers, is also super expensive as well. Um, which is a card you kind of, like, should be playing in Slivers if you're playing Slivers, so... Hey, Garruk's Champion, with cool art. I feel like if I ever made tokens specifically for the channel, it would just be this. It would just be, like, pink and green stripes, just like that. <laughs> That's all it would be. Um, yeah, Boggles Trons sounds good. <laughs> What, what would you even do with a Boggle Tron deck? Like, what X cost enchantments would go on a Boggle's creature? That would be that would matter. Uh, uh, what are we playing? We are currently playing the Devotion to Goats deck. So it's a mono-white deck that is designed to get a whole bunch of goats into play um, as the, like, win condition. Um, what does Knights of White Orchid make? So Knight of the White Orchid, actually, if your opponent controls more lands than you... Uh, when you, uh, yeah, if your opponent controls more lands than you, you gotta actually go fetch up a planes and put it into play tapped. So, in some matchups, it's really good. Against Tron, it's really good because Tron gets extra lands into play or lands really quickly. Uh, in this matchup, mm, not so much. Um, I think we're going to just take damage from four or five. So, we're gonna take six damage. Yeah. Uh, either the infinite one or blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. 
Um, we are in need. Need every archetype in one deck. So it's a control aggro combo deck. Fair enough. Um, precinct captain, also very good. Uh, I think we're going to play a precinct captain. And precinct captains say stuff like, well, men, you need to get out there and patrol the streets. So that's what precinct captain says. I mean, as creatures, as I played it. Uh, and yes, we are going to play this. The answer is yes. And then we will... Sh do I ship it to our opponent's turn? Uh, yeah, I think so. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why didn't this guy... Oh, I draw a card. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I created creatures. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it... Uh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, go to our opponent's turn. This is going to get real hairy for us this turn, guys. We're going to have to start blocking with stuff that we don't really want to block with. Uh, just so we don't die. Uh, so that's the thing. Paradox Engine Tron Staff Deck. Oh, wow. That would be... Uh, Paradox Engine Tron Staff Deck. What would even be in that? Uh, so is there... So, okay. So is there was one kid I knew years ago that showed up with a 200 deck of slivers, about 20 lands, and all the slivers were foiled. Huh. Well. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's going to be... So, hmm. Huh. We need to block some stuff. Uh, four, five, six... I think if we go this way, yeah, I think that's the way we're going to have to go. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, guys. That's wrong. I meant to do both precinct captains here, not precinct captain and mentor of the meek. That is really bad. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the thing that happens. Oh, and he's regenerating movement combat. Whew. Okay, well, an aspect of Hydra, that's a thing. That's a thing that I think might actually kill me? No? No, it doesn't kill me. Uh, I still take four... Yeah, no, it does kill me. <laughs> I am so dead. Eleven punts. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, well, we die to the Stompy deck. Uh, I'm not doing much. Not a whole lot I can do here. Uh, so we're going to go to game two. We know we're playing against Stompy deck now, so what do we need to put in sideboard-wise to deal with the stompage um, because I don't really want to lose another game uh, I think in all hostilities is probably a good deck a good card to put in um, what do we even have in here I'm not gonna lie I don't even remember what's in this sideboard for the most part and about extra artifact or enchantment nope uh, red decks nope uh, protection from black nope nevermore also nope uh, so I think it's really putting an end hostilities and taking out what comes out? Um, I didn't even know we had Oblivion Ring in here. That's fantastic. That is a great card. Uh, so I think taking out a Mentor of the Meek. Probably taking out two of them. They are good, but I don't think they're fast enough for us. Also, a Blessed Lion. No. Uh, Honor the Pier. Uh, one of you can come out. Actually, I don't even need to take that out. I only have two. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mirror Entity and Mentor of the Meek, we're taking out one and one. And that should be good. Marty Reanimator next, please. We'll see if we have time. Um, we are getting pretty late, so this may be our last game. We'll see. We'll see. We'll play it by ear. Remember that time I got no lands? That was right now. I'm going to stop using that joke. That joke is getting super, super duper old and lame. And I totally hit keep, not mulligan. Uh... Punt, 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 punt. Super puntage. The whole deck doesn't seem like it's going to be fast enough, honestly. I agree, especially when I accidentally hit keep on something. Which is super punt. Super punt. Okay, well, again. For next live stream, there will be a punt counter, and we will try and keep it under 10. Because this is pretty sad, to be quite honest. Uh well, I hope you guys are at least having fun watching me punt like a like a quarterback. Quarterback's punt, right? Is that a thing? 12 punts. Ben, you're keeping track. Your official Ben is the official punt tracker. Uh, again, we got we draw land. We draw one. 
We need two to do anything. Uh, so that's the thing. This deck should be called All Two Drops, I think. Because I think it's mostly two drops, to be quite honest. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Mav90 wants to see Mono Black. Uh, Mono Black we played earlier in the day. Uh, we lost a lot with it. Because, yeah. Yes, quarterback wins. I mean, I legitimately asking this as like a question mark solely because I live in Canada and only really watch hockey. To be oh oh my God, light has shone down upon us and we are now uh, <laughs> we are now gonna do. Okay. Hey, what? There's nothing wrong with playing Hearthstone. I play Hearthstone as well. Um, not very well to be quite honest, but I do play Hearthstone and. Uh. I think we ship it to our opponent's turn and Blessed Alliance our opponent's Leatherback. I think that's the way it's going to go. Punter's Punt. Okay. Uh, hold for Blessed. I am. Don't worry. <laughs> I say don't worry like you shouldn't worry, but there's a little bit that you like maybe should worry realistically. <laughs> uh, uh, how are you? Uh, S hold on. Espadardo Elf. I am fantastic. I'm actually feeling really good today. Uh, in the future, when you when your punt counter gets to ten, you should chug a beer. That seems dangerous, brew dude. <laughs> Chugging a beer because I punt counter gets to ten. We'll have to come up with like a legitimate like punt counter things. Uh, okay, target player sacrifices a creature. Um, yeah, we'll have to come up with, like, a, a list of, like, these are the punishments for, like, punt counter getting to certain thing. Maybe we'll actually do, like, a punt counter gets to 5, punt counter gets to, like, 10, 15. Hopefully we won't get to 15. What are we at now? We're at, like, 12, I think, or 13? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it happens. And he plays another Leatherback. I was hoping oh, he did play a third land. Good. So Night of the White Orchid is going to save us a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Ten punts equal play modern deck in Legacy. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to play a modern deck in Legacy. That's like playing a standard deck in modern. Which means some standard decks can do okay in modern. They're you know they they don't win enough. Uh, do you agree that Jerry the Unsleep Media is cancer to the NTG community? I feel very similar to uh, Jerry. Uh, what Jeremy? from Unsleep Media as I do to Desolator Magic, where there is some content that he has that is, is good and is very valid and he brings up really cool stuff, but there's other content that he has that is just too negative for me. Um, and I don't I don't think it adds to the community as much as it could. So again, there's always gonna be goods, there's always gonna be bads. There's some content that he has that I think is really cool and like, oh wow, this is really fun because I'm still subscribed to him. But there's also some times that, yeah. Um, as for 20 punts equals 1v1 EDH for Diverse Jolt, that's actually something we're actually going to be doing in the next season of Back Alley Magic, is not just modern decks anymore, it's going to be also EDH decks. So, um, we can just chalk my punts from this episode up for that, so. It's going to be rough, I'm not going to lie, it's going to be like budget EDH decks versus his decks, which are really good. Mm, not so good for me, I don't think. Uh, can you make a treasure hunt deck? I, I really want to make a treasure hunt deck, don't get me wrong. The problem is, relatively recently, like maybe a couple months ago, uh, Saffron Olive made a treasure hunt deck, and I just, I just don't really want to make. Can I take? Yeah, I take four. I don't really want to make a treasure hunt deck that is a deck that already exists. So it's like been recently made by so you. Know, yeah. Um, I don't have enough play stasis there. Otherwise, I would play it. Okay. What does our opponent think he wants to do? Oh, good, he played another land, which means if we play another white Knight of the White Orchid, we get another land. Um, yeah. So again, MTG, MTG Goldfish did one recently, which is why I don't want to make another Treasure Hunt deck. Um, I may hold off for maybe like six months to a year, and if some new interesting cards that can work with Treasure Hunt come up, I might make a new Treasure. I may I may make a Treasure Hunt deck at that point, but right now it's just not worth it for me. Um, so so I'll cancel. Um, Sphere of Heliod, not going to do anything good for us. I think our best bet is probably just getting another Knight of the White Orchid out. Things, we don't have another 2-drop. 
Yeah, that doesn't really help us a whole lot. It does get us the land we need, which then we can play Spring Jack Shepherd with. So, it's not the best. I think we can weather the storm if we play Knight of the Wood Orchid. Um, Knight of the White Orchid. I'm starting to slur my speech from, like, getting dry mouth. I should probably just drink more water. Okay. Uh, if we had a two drop, this would be fantastic right now. We don't. We're sitting on a lot of three drops. Um, I could have stasis snare. The problem is I can take the four damage still. We're at 16 life. Um, I'd rather get another land into play and then play either Spring Jack Shepherd or um, you know, probably Spring Jack Shepherd realistically. Because um, Spring Jack Shepherd will get us five zero one one goats. <laughs> so it'll be allow us to just block for days. More beer. I think I'm. I think I'm good. I think I'm good for now. Um, more beer will just make me play worse, and you probably just dehydrate me more. And then I'll have to run off and go to the bathroom, which would be terrible as well. <laughs> so uh, you could stay a snare in response to pump. You raise a valid point. I think that may have been a better bet. We will see. Uh, hey, dude, how you doing? Really ready for the new set. Can't wait for cool pirate tribal. I agree. I'm doing quite well, uh, Arno. Um, things are going quite well, uh, and I think the new set is going to be really cool. I'm actually quite you know, quite excited and looking forward to actually playing it. Um, so I think we just go single block here. Um, yeah. And we'll take four, hopefully not a whole bunch. Oh, I realize I'm not even, I keep forgetting to open the graveyards up. I guess you can see them over my shoulder here. Like, you can still see them, I guess, over here, like above my shoulder, but it's better if you guys can actually see them on the side. Um, hopefully he doesn't pump to oblivion and do a ton of... Oh, he didn't. Okay, good. Again, take four damage, not the end. Okay, end of hostilities is a good idea. The problem with end hostilities is it's not four mana, it's five mana, because this is a budgeted deck. Yeah. End hostilities is really good against boggles, which is actually pretty strong in the format right now. So that is the thing to keep in mind. Um, again, we can block for days. <sighs> Let's see. What do we? Depends on what we draw. Um, really depends on what we draw. Mirror entity. Mirror entity is fantastic. Um, so the two questions. One is stasis snare. Mm, yeah. So one is we can stasis snare. I think that's actually going to be the way to go. Um. We swing in with both of these guys. Yeah. So we swing in both. Because why not? Might as well get an extra little bit of damage in. Uh, he probably forgot that Knight has a first strike. Ah, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. He may have still been just baiting us because he keeps attacking with his, like, Birds of Paradise. Uh, so which is kind of what I'm thinking he's kind of doing is, like, just kind of baiting us and hoping that something would go wrong. Um, so Stasis Snare for sure is definitely the better bet. Um, that being said, I really want to play Spring Jack. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, just because we want to get a bunch of goats into play. Uh, okay, go to our opponent's turn. We are going to play Stasis Snare on his turn. Um, either I think we're going to either, either do it in response to uh, Leatherback or we're going to do it uh, to one of the Birds of Paradise, depending on what he plays. <sighs> he plays another Leatherback. That's difficult for us. Frustrating and difficult. Um, what do we think? I think it's going to be... Because he's not going to... Eh. If I played Spear of Heliod, I can also just double block his leather back and kill it. But, yeah. Treetop Village becomes a 3-3. Three, three. That's exciting. x star Creature and Opponent Controls. Uh, we can totally just exile his, his Treetop Village. That'd be kind of fun. Um, get rid of one of his lands. I mean, he has a ton of mana-producing stuff anyways. Um, so what do you think? What's better? Destroying the land. He has four lands plus four, three things that produce mana. I don't think he really cares. I think probably Stasis snaring the leather back is probably a better bet. Yeah, I think so. Uh, one, two, three. And grabbing the leather back. I wish this was a... Um, what is it? Detention Sphere, I think is what it is. Blue White gets everything and all other things that have the same name, so we can get both of them. That'd be rad. Um, clearly, it's not what it is, <laughs> but that'd be really cool right now. Uh, well, 
Uh, stall for a land. And, yeah. Okay, what do we think here now? We're going to take three damage from this guy, which is fine. Nothing in the world. Um, if we play Springback Shepherd now, we actually get six goats, which is pretty rad. Um, I think that's... The big thing is I'm, I'm scared he's going to do the same thing he did last time. We're just going to be pump and, and, like, explode. So that's my, my current concern. Um, we'll see what we draw. But I think largely we're probably going to play Oblivion Ring. <laughs> We could play Oblivion Ring on his other Spring Jack. Uh, you probably have to cast it last time. Uh, so we have two two options. Oblivion Ring, getting rid of his Leatherback. Um, and hope he doesn't get the pump stuff to like do a ton of damage. Um, yeah, I think that's the direction we're going to go. Uh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So getting rid of Leatherback. Swinging in for four... Um, because he has all this stuff is flying. Flicker your knight. <sighs> that would have been a smart idea. Um, yeah, no, I think Brewer Dude, you are completely right. I that is probably a better bet. Um, flickering the knight, getting it, get flickering the knight to get another land, and then we can basically end hostilities and wipe his board. Is probably would have been a way better bet. Too late now. Uh, but it is a that's definitely a better line of play. Oh well, too late now. Um, we're not out of this game yet, though. <clears throat> um, I do think I'm going to swing into both of these guys. And fingers crossed he doesn't have the crazy pump stuff. Um, mind you, he doesn't have enough... Maybe. Maybe he does. One card in hand, though. Who knows? Who knows what it is? Okay. Um, we don't have enough to do anything else, so we're literally just going to go to combat and swing with everything. Swing with everything. Okay. Attack with all creatures. Go to our opponent's turn. Okay. My voice is starting to hurt. I'm not used to, like, streaming. I'm not used to talking for extended period of times. Um, I do enjoy talking. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But extended period of times is quite difficult for my vocal cords. Uh, land is on end step. Yeah. Um, experimental one. He makes the three three village again. Um, hmm. I th uh, super duper risky. So we're gonna take three damage. I don't know why he keeps it keeps baiting in with like one of his like birds of paradise. <laughs> super funny. Uh. Oh, oh, and he is playing. Does he has it? Does he have it? Uh, kicker for four, four, five, six, seven. No. Puts me at two though, which is super duper scary. Um, mm, I think. Okay. My my inclination is to play. Um. When are you going to look at user decks? I'm going to look at them not during the stream. Um, that'll be like when we start doing, because we're going to do like brewing with a brew, where we'll like look at brews that come in. Uh, but right now it's going to be, yeah. Um, has this deck any life gain? It does not have any life gain in it. Uh, yeah. It would have been a lot better though to do the Night of the White Orchid um, last turn, flicker it, and then get a land and then end hostilities. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to look at uh, decks, sorry digressing. I'm not going to look at decks this stream. Uh, next stream we'll probably look at some play user decks if we're actually going to be doing some like brewing with the decks. Uh, but I'll look at a bunch of decks off stream and then kind of give, give some feedback on the Facebook group. What is this deck called? This is uh, Goat Devotion. Um, Meadow Grain. Hmm. Uh, so if I play the Shepherd, if he has a pump spell, I die. If he doesn't, I have a whole bunch of creatures. And then Mirror Entity next turn. Yeah. Uh, the other thing would be Flicker Wisp. Get a land. End Hostilities. Uh, I don't know which is a better play. That's my problem right now. Uh, I think Spring Dock Shepherd to get a bunch of goats. That means if we live another turn, we win, likely. I think that's the way it's going to go. That's what we're doing. I don't know if it's the best play. Um, playing Flicker Wisp to get another land may have been a better bet. 
but I don't think this is a terrible call either. Yeah. Uh, do you play Shrine of Nyx? I don't. It is a very good... I'm Adrian, by the way, yeah. Um, Shrine of Nyx would be good in this deck. Also, Nyctos. Yeah, Nyctos would be really good in this deck. Um, I don't play it in this deck because it's not budget, and this is like a $40 budget deck. So, yeah. Um, yeah, his land has Trample, but I can also double block with Knights of the White Orchid. So I'm not too concerned about it right now. Uh, okay, go to come or go to our opponent's turn, and we'll see how things pan out. <laughs> I mean, if he if he draws it, he draws it. If he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, and we go to game three potentially uh, to get another land. And then end hostilities would not work for the turn. You're probably right. Yeah. Uh, you sound very different in the deck text. Um, yeah. I mean, I've been streaming for three and a bit hours now, so uh, the vocal cords are getting a little bit uh, like I've been smoking since I was five. Um, so that's <laughs> something to keep in mind. Um, also, when I'm in the doing the deck text, I tend to be a lot more energetic all the time, so where I just, you just can't physically keep that up, um, that like super energy all the time, super high pitch, there's super high tonal difference. Um, so it's just one of those things that uh, you'll always sound different in live stream than you will uh, on um, in real life. Um, and even in real life, when I'm not live streaming as well, I will sound even more relaxed and chill. Um, so this can go one of two ways. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if we play Mirror Entity, we can... Yeah, I think Flicker Wisp is probably the best bet. You're probably right. Uh, yeah. Uh, flickering the Spring Jack Shepherd. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's the best bet. Uh, the other one option would be actually playing, uh, Sphere, or Sphere, Spear of Heliod, um, because then I can actually, um, hold on. Um, is it, should I do Shepherd? I think Shepherd's the best bet. Yeah. But Shepherd's the best bet. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. Um, yeah, because flickering for a land is kind of like doesn't get enough value, where flickering to get another whole bunch of goats, um, a lot of goats, is going to be awesome. Uh, especially because if we play Sphere or Sp Spear of Heliad, um, next turn we can actually make them all really big, or if we draw another land, we can actually play Mirror Entity and make things big as well, technically. Um, yeah, I think this is the way it's going to be. Why Spear instead of always watching? Uh, because Sphere does everything where always watching only does tokens. Um, even though I think always watching is two. Yeah, we only have two Spear of Heliods as well. There's two Spears of Heliod. Um, we also have four um, onto the Pierce. Which is really what we really want because it makes all of these guys plus one easy. Plus, oh, all white creatures easy. So yeah. Um, okay. See what our opponent thinks. That's a lot of goats. That is a lot of goats. Uh, Penches, great channel. Keep up the good work. I'm from Argentina. Oh, really? How is Argentina this time of year? I hear it's winter down there. Is it winter down in Argentina? Argentina? Because Always Watching doesn't hit tokens. Oh, I thought Argent I thought Always Watching only hit tokens. Uh, one or the other. Um, okay, so he makes it into a l creature. I don't see why that is valuable to him. Um, sure. Um, what about Honor the Pier then? I have uh, four Honor the Piers in the deck. <laughs> so Honor the Pier is in the deck um, as a four of. Is he going to attack with both of the treetop villages? He is. Well, that's easy. Uh, so... We will double block uh, with these guys here. And I think uh, Flicker Wisp is, I think we just, oh no, because uh, we will still take two damage. So it's going to be, uh, cancel that. I think it's going to be just one, two, three. Uh, he doesn't know card in hand, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, yes. Um, hold on. Someone's asking. Uh, 
Have you heard of SBMTG? Yes, of course. Um, I am a very, also a very big fan of Strictly Better MTG. Um, Village has trample, I know. That's why I had to block with a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't want to go to time again. <laughs> sucks. Okay. Playing spear or spear and then a swing with everything. I think that's enough to win. I think that's enough to go for lethal. And attack with everything. Attack with all creatures. I guess I understand now why a lot of like live streamers that do MPG like don't interact with the community at all. Um, they like they wait until they're finished the match because it's just really easy to go to time. Like I've spent ten minutes now basically just talking to you guys and like seeing what you guys are saying, thinking about stuff like that. So yeah, I can see why they do it. Um, that should be lethal though. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's not lethal. We'll see. We'll see. So he's going to basically block everything uh, and take 15 damage. Yeah, it's, it's lethal. I don't know why he's bother blocking. Um, like, I have 10 goats here and 5 goats here. <laughs> like, that's 15 straight out of the gate. Okay, go to sideboard. I don't know if we run change anything. Uh, I Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we can actually change. Uh, I almost kind of think taking out another Mentor of, the, Mentor of the Meek and putting in the Mirror Entity back in might actually be a okay option. And, I mean, yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. This goat deck is actually fun. Um, there's a bunch of actually goat decks out there that are pretty fun. Like the um, the Mana Sources deck is actually pretty fun as well. I mean, I tried that out a little bit when I was starting this deck to see, like, because I didn't want to make his deck again and just, like, represent the Mana Sources deck. Um, well, that seemed kind of silly to me. Um, so I kind of wanted to make it different enough. Um, Prison Arrows deck in Modern is hilariously fun. Um, hmm. Uh, I think we'll keep this because we can Blessed Alliance something. And I would like to keep a bunch of lands. Uh, this deck seems like it needs a few more lands. Uh, it's completely possible. Uh, completely possible. I don't... Yeah. Maybe. I think maybe going up one land. I mean, realistically, it needs Nyctos is what it really needs, um, because it has already, like, a ton of devotion. It just needs more. Um, 24 lands is probably a better bet for this deck, and I think it's actually running 22 right now. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think it's 22. You guys are going to you all have to look for me, because I don't actually have the answer off the top of my head. Uh, yeah. Go to our turn. Yeah, he's hastening in for two damage. Good job, opponent. Okay, Flicker Wisp, that's neat. Um, and I think we're going to hold up for Blessed Alliance. Make him get rid of this guy at least. Uh, is that worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. It's better than playing Night of the Record for zero value. Compared to if he plays another land, we can get value off of it. Which he played land, so we're going to get value off of it. 23. Okay, I'm down by one. But realistically, you should be running at least three of Nyctos. Maybe four even. Even though it's a legendary, kind of really want it. Oh, really? Tree top village coming three three, swing to my face. Yeah, yeah. It's me going making duck sounds. Um, opponent sacrifices a creature. Not gonna do too much. He's gonna just obviously sacrifice this guy. He's gonna come back with a one one counter on it, which is not amazing. Not amazing at all. Um, never for legacy or legendary. Yeah, I know. Um, the big thing is, like, it's one of those cards you, like, really want to draw in a devotion deck, so having three... Uh, it's, it's kind of 50-50. I understand I would probably play three, but there is an argument for four. The deck is currently running 22 lands. Okay, yeah, so I am definitely short on lands. What the heck? Why did he sacrifice his... Why did he sacrifice the treetop village? Oh, uh, I don't know why. Huh. Apparently our opponent decided that he didn't want to sacrifice this guy and have it come back. Strange. Um, okay, well, we'll play the land. Play uh, Mentor of the Meek, I guess. Uh, probably because Knight of the White Orchid isn't going to get us any value. Yeah. And skipping through our opponent's turn. 
Punt, uh, not really punt. Um, punt on our opponent, maybe. Okay, no, I'm not blocking. <laughs> I'd rather keep this guy and draw a card. Hmm, that's, that's scary. Not that scary, but a little scary. Um, okay, I think we play... I think we play Night of the White Orchid. Do we? Or do we play Springjack Shepherd? I think we play Shepherd. Play Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> Punt on our opponent. Uh, doesn't matter which one goes first, because we're not doing either of them. Or oh, we're not doing uh, Metro the Meek, I should say. No, 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 no. I don't have mana to pay for any of these. <laughs> so, get out of here. Get out of here. You're just wasting my time. You're burning my clock. Get out of here. You're burning my clock. All right, go to my opponent's turn. Uh, turning off the knight's ability is pretty irrelevant. Agreed. I don't think it was a very good call on our opponent's part. Um, but he decided to do it anyways, so that's what he decided. Uh, I would have uh, probably been better for him to keep up the lands. Uh, and yeah. Okay. Playing as quick as I can here. I don't want to go to clock again. Um, if I do go to clock again, we're going to have to look at how we change this. Maybe it's one of the things we'll like, if we know when I'll be live streaming, we can actually start doing like viewers are the ones, like you guys are the ones that actually join me and play. Um, maybe that's better and then we can play a little bit longer matches uh, and then we can actually chat and do stuff. Um, otherwise, it'll be a little bit less of the chatting and playing. Uh, yeah. Um, and I don't think I need to block anything. I don't think at this time, I, this uh, this case, this point, I don't block anything. Um, yeah. That's a little bit of damage. That is a uh, aspect of the Hydra. Aspect of Hydra, for those that don't know, it gives creature plus X plus X where, or plus X plus X where, turn on turn where it's your devotion. Plus X plus X equal to your devotion. Trying to say that quickly. Thinking, thinking too much. All right, let's just go to my turn. Oh, our opponent apparently scooped the game. Oh no, no, I lost. He he pumped my guys. He pumped both his guys. Is it both his guys? Apparently this does both. Uh, target creature gets plus X plus X until I turn where X is your devotion to green. Uh, he had two of them. That's neat. Who would have guessed? He would have had two of them. Well, that is a thing that happens. I didn't see that coming, to be quite honest. Oh, wow. All right, well, we're going to go to full screen. Anyways, this is going to be the end of the stream. My, my, my throat feels like it is about to explode. It is also 10 o'clock here now. So it's getting quite late. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. Um, as always, I'm Adrian. This is Giant Monster Games. I'll actually chat with you guys a little bit before I actually run away. Um, yeah. Anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> troll. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't ever see it coming. That's uh, that's the the thing about decks like that. Anyhow, as I was saying, I'm about running off here. I'm about to run off here. I don't think I have the vocal cord, the vocal cord stamina to play another game. So I think we're going to be calling it quits for the night. Um, thanks for hanging out and playing some games with me. Um, again, next time I will actually put a thing up so you guys know when I'll be streaming next time. Hopefully a day or two in advance so you can actually see Giant Monster Games will be streaming on yada 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 day. Um, and I'll actually put a title that makes sense to what we're actually doing. So if it was a, um, if it's going to be like a brewing uh, video, then we'll be doing brewing. If it's not, it'll be uh, playing some games and just hanging out. Um, until next time, though. Oh, hold on. Uh, are there any other good white devotion cards? Mm, not that I can think off the top of my head. Um, I would have obviously put them in the deck if they were, but not really. Um, okay, guys. Uh, signing off. <laughs> punt counter was... What was our final punt counter? I think our final punt counter was like 12 or 13. Uh, next stream, I'll actually have a punt counter and we can actually keep track of our punts. Um, or my punts, not our punts. My punts. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, until next time, guys. I'm Adrian. This is Giant Monster Games. And don't forget to game like a giant monster. Stop streaming.